team, Cerritos has the running attack. Let's be honest about that. And as far as the Hornets are concerned, they live and die on the arm of their quarterback right now for that Hornet team. Yeah, for Cerritos, Ramondre, Ramondre Stevenson is a guy to go to. Leads the nation, not the nation, but the state in rushing. 85 carries, 953 yards on the season, 11.2 yards per rush. That's pretty impressive right there with nine touchdown scores. So the Fullerton College defense has to be on their toes. But on the flip side, Gresh Jensen, the reigning National Division Player of the Week, passed for over 400 yards last week against Palomar in that 56 to 31 victory. He's really the guy that makes them go. He's got a special weapon out there in Robert Downs the third. Look for him. He's been itching for a punt return for a touchdown. Let's see if he ties the record today. Well, and I'm going to throw in Mark L. Raymond and our running back we think is going to have a great one. players it's got to be a little cold a little wet I got to ask you what does it feel like down in the field right now here at Chappelle Stadium we'll get down to know in just one moment and Mark he's going to tell us also about the field conditions and also like you said what Fullerton, Fullerton can do on defense So let's get ready as Cerritos has accepted the kickoff. Brandon Jones is going to be back deep with Tucker standing next to him. So it's going to be Jones and Tucker. Jones signals for it. He's going to take it and runs out of bounds at the two-yard line. He called for a fair catch, so that's going to be put at the 25-yard line. And we'll get the starting lineups while they figure out what's going on. Is Shane Darso the right end, Blake Hill the right tackle, James Rawls the left tackle, and Joey Noble, All-American Joey Noble, you heard it here first, is the left end. So we saw the coaching staff for the Hornets immediately say, okay, you know, then you need to realize, but they're going to take it. Right there at the 25, Bravo comes out at quarterback. Stevenson, the man everybody's talking about, Corey. I mean, this young man, once he gets an opening, you kiss him goodbye down the field. 6'1", 230. First and 10 at the 25 for the Cerritos Falcons. While we have a break, middle linebacker for the Hornets is Cole Hansen. Peter Kasibwe on the right side, 33. On the far side, 48, is Ryan Simpson. Far side corner is Avion Steele. Near side is Jay Brown, number 23 and 25, respectively. And the safeties, Troy LaFridge, who had a pick six last week, and Kari Henley, three and seven. Javon Tucker to the near side of the field. Hartog, the big tight end in the slot. <laughs> as soon as 
he catches the football. And that's why Xavion Steele leads the team in tackles from the corner position. That means he's aggressive, Mark, on the outside. And that offensive line for the Falcons, Justin Gonzalez, one of the captains, Noah Clayson, Ernesto Ramirez, Adam Torville, and Fidel Mendez up front. Park comes to the near side of the field with a gasser on the slot this time. Bravo walks underneath, second down and 22 for the Falcons. Handed off on the left-hand side, taken there by Stevenson, gain of maybe one on the play. Good stretch by Joey Noble coming up from to finish it. It's going to be Gardner, excuse me, not Gardner, but Ryan Simpson. Third down from this Falcons team, and we've seen them. They've played hot and cold right down by Noble. so far this season. They start off 3-0. and They come in here with back-to-back -back losses. Tucker out here on the left-hand side. Gasser in the slot next to him. Bravo looks things over. Stevenson still in the backfield. Big third down and about 11. Looking for time, going deep. Left all alone, and Corey, you release the receiver, and what you do is Tucker doesn't get picked up and is overshot because he found an opening, I thought, in the gap. Yeah, he found it in the gap, but the fridge was closing quickly. I don't think there was that much room for him to make that. It had to be a perfect throw coming through. So that's going to bring up a fourth down, and Robert downs the third. Is back there. He's been accredited with uh, many returns that have been taken back. So he's sort of playing with that bank account that's at zero right now. Little kick. Robert Downs waits for it. Looks. Ducks in the middle. Cuts the outside. Gets across the 40. They're going to mark him down the 42, but there's a flag on the play. Hold on the kick by the Hornets. Back him up 10 yards to start. These are two of the most penalized football teams on the community college level. So it could be an interesting day. It could be the day of the hanky here at Chappelle Stadium. On SportsNetUSA.net, Corey Nalen, Mark Pavlovich. So Gress Jensen will start at quarterback for the Hornets. You look at Gress this year so far, 165 attempts, 97 completions. He throws at about a 59% clip when he's in the game. Averages 238 yards a game. Just a little under nine yards a throw. He's got 11 touchdowns this season, three interceptions, and his longest one was for 88 yards. Lucky. Avenger, that's like Avenger with an eye, is in the backfield. First down and 10 at the 42. Sean North to the far side of the field. Richardson with him. So while we're getting ready up front for the Falcons, Jordan Thomas, Ikene Humabe, DeLeon Arthur, and the team's second leading tackler, Jason Nettles on that right end, number 32. The backers, you got two, two good ones, Latrell Stearns, 10, and Tashawn Barnaby, 15, the team's leading tackler. Press throws it quickly out in the flat, taken there by Markel Raymond, who has really unusually deceptive speed. I'm going to say it's unusually deceptive. No, it's, you don't even find it deceptive. I you don't, just think he's, he's just flat. Fast. He's fast. flat out fast. Okay. I mean, you really haven't seen him been able to get out and run. He's been open so much, and by so wide a margin, you haven't shown his speed really. First down and ten at the 45. Press goes back again. Goes towards Markel Raymond who comes inside Just Gresh Jensen, Jensen throws it to his outside shoulder. Yeah, Gresh was looking for the outside miscommunication. They're working on that defensive secondary, Noah Guzman, Noah Peterson, Theo Landeros, Robert Corner. 
Robert Downs the third. Tim Allen comes in to the far side of the field. Juwan Johnson back in football. There's another one that's got a set of hands on him. The far slot. Chris Jensen goes back, steps up across the middle of the field, tries the throw to Johnson and throws a little behind him. Incomplete pass. It's going to bring up a third down. Yeah, Markel Raymond is fast. Jawan Johnson might be faster, Mark. You're looking at a guy who's been hurt the last couple of weeks. Welcome back. He's still the team's leading receiver. Dennis Houston comes out of the game. So does Tim Allen. Xavier Green now comes in the game with Sean Carter. Sean Carter, far side of the field. Xavier Green, the low side of the field. Third down and 10 at the 45. Gresh steps up, looks the middle of the field, finds Tim Allen. Tim Allen goes up, refuses to go down. Tim Allen still is on his feet. Finally gets ruled down at the 28-yard line. Gang tackled at the 28. Cerritos, if you notice, they're going for the strips. One guy holds him up, the other guy's trying to go for the strips. McGee now in a running back for the Hornets. First down and 10 at the 29. Tim Allen, near side of the field. Xavier Green in the slot next to him. Robert Downs the third, far side of the field. Sean Carter out there. They go to Xavier Green. Xavier Green gets a couple yards on the play. Pushed out of bounds by Guzman. Xavier Green had his first touchdown reception last week against Palomar in the first quarter. Gain of five on the play. Gress brings him up quickly. McGee still in the backfield. Hands it off, fakes it to McGee. Gresh straight up the middle, quarterback keeper, touchdown, Fuller to college. And if you notice on that drive, Mark, outside, 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 pass over the middle, but just trying to stay outside. They run a, a RPO, and if you'll, you'll see in the replay, it's a fake all the way to McGee. And so McGee fakes it, and Gresh Jensen is wide open in the middle, lumbering 18 yards for the six. Corey Lewis comes in for the point after. Claiming he'll kick a 64-yard field goal for Corey before the season ends. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. With 12.05 to go here in the first quarter, will the Hornets get on the board first? It's the Hornets 7, the Falcons 0 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Hey, you know, if you're watching this game today, you're looking at those Hornet uniforms and you're saying, you know, it, when I played a game, I thought I was really good, but what I really looked good in is what I wore. Then there's those other teams that no matter what you look at, they look horrible. Well, if you need to find that special uniform, go to EliteSportsUSA.net. They have a vast variety, and they have a stockpile of uniforms that you walk in, you don't have to wait. You can get those unis right then. Hey, maybe you don't play too well, Maybe you're a little slow like the man to my right, but in the right uniform, you look like a speed burner, especially here on Sportsnet, USA.net. I want the, the cheer uniforms. I like those sweats. Tucker is back out there. And that is going to be Brandon Jones on the near side. Okay, so it's Tucker and Jones back deep again. Bigfoot. Once again, fair catch signal for it goes out of bounds this time. So instead of the 25, they get the 35. So good field position for the Falcons. That's right, it's the battle of the birds today. Well, not really. It's a bug against, I was trying to make a hornet maybe more of a bird, you know, because you know a falcon would just snatch that hornet out of the air and eat it. You know that. Takes, you know, guys, don't get old. It's like you going for a donut. Have you ever seen Corey Neely go for a donut? He is like that falcon going for the hornet. I don't have to go for a donut. Not quick. I already got it. <laughs> I'm not sharing that. Bravo, back in at quarterback. Stevenson at running back. Near side of the field. It's gonna be C.J. Parks. First down and 10 at the 35. They hand it off to Stevenson, right off tackle, turns the corner, and boy, he glides. He glides as a running back. Gets a gain of eight on the play. 
And in, in a moment, we want to go down to Noah and see what the plan is for the Hornet defense. Gave him nine yards on that. So you look at it right there. I mean, Cerritos, 279 yards on the ground per game. Bravo looks him over. Fakes it this time. Lots of time to throw. Pulls it back down. Pressure comes to him, and he throws it just when he lets it go. That pursuing rush from the Hornets, Corey, they never, especially the four down linemen, never give up on a quarterback. And Noah, what do you have to say down there about the Hornet defense? Expect to see a lot of defensive backs up in the box to stop the very talented running back Stevenson of Cerritos. Thanks, Noah. Appreciate it. We'll see if they can do it. He had nine yards on that last carry. A little surprise. They went to a pass on that. Bravo comes back out. Stevenson goes to the right side. Now he goes back into what they'd call a pistol formation. The Hornets come up defensively. Big third down and one. Hand it off to Stevenson straight up the middle. And I tell you what, that's like pulling a cork out of a bottle. It was that easy first down for the Falcons. And that's why you don't mind that second down pass trying to go down the field. Try to catch him off guard because you know when you got 953 yards in the backfield from one guy, one yard on the third down, most likely 80% of the time, it always works. So first and 10 right at the 47. Tate comes over here on the near side of the field. Next game is going to be C.J. Park. Stevenson stays in the backfield. Bravo looks over the defense. First down and 10. A little bobble there. Stevenson gets a block, and it's not enough to really have that mistake get him for a sack. Well, because James Rawls was in the backfield as quickly as the ball as it dribbled back, so he forced him out to the right side of the field, but Joey Noble was there to clean up. That's his third sack of the season. Loss of five on the play. It's going to bring up a second down and 15 at the 42. A little dark, a little cold here today. And Mark, those two guys, Rawls is an all-conference performer, and so is Noble. Good chances to be All-Americans, both of them. Gasser goes out to the far side of the field. Outside of him on that side is going to be C.J. Parks. Tucker, the lone receiver. We get a hand touch. Flag is thrown. Should be against the Hornets. We shall see. And offside. Speaking of Rawls and Noble, they were the ones that jumped offside. Now, is it offside or is it offsides? I always thought it was offsides because there's two sides. There's that side and this side. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Second down to 10. See, that's what's nice about being old. The old people <laughs> next to me just agree. Bravo looks it over and says, no matter what, guys, we get the five yards back. It's second down and 10. Rolls away, fakes it to Stevenson. Throws to the big tight end that you need to keep an eye on this whole game. Hartog rolls out out of Los Alamitos High School. Nice throw, nice catch, nice design play because you want to get Fullerton going. They've been so aggressive. They had to come back and got caught off guard. It's the tight end's second reception this season. Sort of a lost position on the community college level. College level. I'm going to say college level. Yeah. Big third down. Cross midfield already for the Falcons. They're down by seven with nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. Pressure comes and Bravo just said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was I having a party and did I invite all you guys in the blue? Well, you heard Noah mention it. The linebackers are going to have to have a huge game. Cole Hansen, Peter Kasibwe. He, he had to replay Peter Kasibwe and Cole Hansen come straight up the middle and bring him down. Kasibwe's really had a nice season in his, in his fourth, third start of the season. 25 tackles. That's his second sack. Cole Hansen, his first of the season. Robert Downs, the third back. He's going to stand right about the 10 yard line with 8.22 to go here in the first quarter. Little side pooch out of bounds at the 49. At the 49, Mark. Yeah, the 49 of Cerritos. 
and you see the difference in the kick. The first kick, Mark, straight up, straight ahead, nice hang time, good coverage, no gain. They tried to do a soccer style kick. They came to the right side, and again. Well, and it's where the ball flies out of bounds, Corey, that was actually a punt of minus half yard on that. Give him a yard. Gresh Jensen comes back out. Moore now back in the backfield. Throws it to him, trying to come on a wheel route with his speed. If he catches it, you can kiss him basically down the field. Yeah, and let him just a little bit too much. And there's going to be a penalty of a chop block on Robert Downs, the third, on the safety coming through. Safety was Theo Landeros. And they're going to get Downs, the third. So they basically, and I like what the official did. Robert Downs III walked over and sort of pled his case, and the official explained to him why he threw the flag. Robert Downs III walked away. And I mean, I like that from an official saying to somebody, this is what you did, I have to call that penalty. If you do it again, it's another flag. So the Hornets will get marched backwards here. Tim Allen now in the game. So near side of the field to the right side of the formation. Tim Allen out wide. Robert Downs the third in the slot next to him. Jawan Johnson, the third man on the right side. Throw it over to Jawan. Jawan gets side steps, gets away from one, two. Does a little boogie move out there and gets another yard on that. It's going to bring up a second down. 22nd catch of the season. Trying to play with tempos. Coach Campbell, now the interim coach for the Hornets. Once again, throws it to Robert Downs the third at the 40, catches it. And we're going to get another flag. We'll see who it's again. Ryan Osborne, the coach's show, watched the catch that Robert Downs the third made against Palomar and said, I have never seen a catch like that in a long time where somebody looks like a third base person getting a line drive two inches off the ground. If you're old enough to remember Franco Harris back in the 70s with the immaculate reception, it was that type of catch. Look so around the room, Cerritos only Mark gets that. As the penalty. Third down and one for the Hornets. Font Eckford straight up the middle. That's going to get first down. So Eckford in the game at running back. Eckford on the carry. Brought down by, brought down by Guzman. And Mark Jensen had his second 400 yard passing down. game last week against Palomar. Brings him back up quickly. Gress looks over in the middle to Markel Raymond, just overshoots it. Yeah, he had time to. He had time in the pocket. He had time to Markel Raymond to clear a little bit more. He didn't have to rush that one. I know he wants that back. And here's what I wanted. Here's what you always think about coaching. Why not go to that same exact play, maybe on the opposite side? So we look at the opposite side of the field. Sean Carter out there along with Robert Downs the third. Xavier Green with Tim on the right side. He looks for Xavier Green. Xavier Green was all by himself. Stops. Gresh Jensen says, no, there's nobody around you. Walk him, man. What's he do? He put him back on the shelf. Incomplete pass. Yeah. He had him there. He didn't have to lead him at all. That's one you throw straight to the numbers as a new left cornerback for the Falcons is going to be Dior Denson. There have been three over there on that side. Third down and 10 for the Hornets, right at the 34. Give it up to Eckford. Eckford makes one cut, comes back in the middle, gets across the 30, down to the Eckford 27, and we're 10. once again going strictly up. The Hornets will go forward on fourth down. Jensen brings, like you said, tempos the game for the Hornets tonight. Looks over the sideline. Tim Allen, near side of the field. Xavier Green in the slot. Robert Downs, the third far side of the field. Gress Jensen goes back. Looks right there. Throws it to Tim Allen. That's two Tim has caught today. Right place, right time, right catch. He's going to have a good last three, last three games of the season. Tried to incorporate him. Now he's getting work. Jensen brings him up, first down and 10, across the 20, marked at the 19 for the Hornets. Jensen looks over, goes back, has time to throw. Looks for Robert Downs, a third, 
can't haul it in. Just a little too tall for him. Good coverage by Noah Eight Peterson. Second and 10 for the Hornets. A lot of substituting for the Falcons. Richardson comes in the game on the far side of the field. Standing next to him is going to be Sean North. Markel Raymond to the near side of the field, to the right side of the formation. Second down and 10. Moore now in at running back. Second down and 10 for the Hornets at the 19. They run an option with Moore. He's got the corner, looks for a block. Works off the one block, cuts the outside and stays there. We're gonna get two flags. I'm gonna ask you, which receiver is the holding flag called on the far side of the field? I guess you can take your pick, but he, if you have the replay, I'm not sure that. Yeah, you always hold, but I don't know if it was that blatant of a hold. Holding on the Hornets. So, I mean, Corey, Sean North looked like he was making a pretty nice block. <laughs> See, this is age. When you're older, you get impatient. <laughs> so who are you gonna call the penalty on? Doesn't matter. I, yeah, I, you know, I think they would have, because both of them made excellent blocks, I think you could have called it on either one of them. Yeah, the, the blocks were that good. The, the, yeah, the initial blocks were great, but again, Jairo Moore bounced to the outside, so they have to hold their block another second, and that creates the hold. So they're looking to So if they're scoring at home, that's a five yard run. Wait. Then they must have called it up at the front receiver on the hole. They must have, because the way they marked it off, they did it against the line of scrimmage, then yeah. they realized it was the receiver. It's gonna bring up a second down and eleven right at the twenty. Moore stays in the backfield for the Hornets. He fakes it. Gresh Jensen can pull it down. He says, let's take off, run and throw a block for me. Moore throws a beautiful block, and Gress runs right the into the tackle, which was the recoil of the block that Moore throws. Yeah, he tried to take on to Sean Barnaby, and Barnaby is the team's leading tackler, tackler at the linebacker spot. And he's not a small guy. He goes 5'11", 215. Third down and four. They hand it to Moore. Moore gets stymied at the line of scrimmage. Great interior play by the Falcons. Yeah, Stearns. Moore on the carry, brought down by number 52. As well, Tyson Reed. 42. Fourth down and two. The Hornets are going to go for it anyway. Gresh Jensen walks up. Moore goes. We look at it now. Tim Allen to the near side of the field. Third side of the field. Far side of the field is Dennis Houston, a young man who really, I think, is one of the better catchers as we get a timeout on the field as the Hornets are trying to figure out what they want to do with 5.07 to go. Here in the first quarter, it's the Hornets 7, the Falcons 0 on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a cold, windy day. You don't want to have a car that's got any leaks coming in. Got to turn up that heat. You just can't get warm no matter what you do. Well, what do I do? I drive into Miller Toyota of Anaheim and I say, look, I need to turn this car in. I know you give me a great trade-in. What do you got that's brand new? Well, I tell you what, talk luxury. Any type of car you want to find Toyota-wise is there at Miller Toyota of Anaheim. So make a deal. Go to Euclid in the 91. Take that old car and turn it back again for a brand new Toyota from Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Miller Toyota of Anaheim, located at Euclid in the 91 is a proud sponsor of high school sports, community college sports, but most of all, education. That's Miller Toyota of Anaheim. And Gresh Jensen driving behind that line of Glenn Bernard, Nathan Millard, and Jacob Jankowiak on the right side. Jensen goes back, looks across, touchdown Fullerton College, shows it right to Jawan Johnson who takes it in for it as if he was cradling a newborn. Second touchdown of the season, laser throw from Jensen. He had good protection on that left side. TJ Storman and James Stanton picked up the twist and Johnson picked up the six. And you see your replay here. Good pocket, U-shape, Johnson quick, touchdown. 
I mean, I want to mention something right after this kick because it's something you've talked about in all the games we've done this year. You said that Gresh Jensen is a better passer when it is a one, two, plant that second foot and throw the football. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. So I really want to know about that because you said that to me so far this year. Boy, if he gets in that rhythm one, two, and throws the football, he throws it on the dime. If he doesn't, he has problems. Yeah, because once he goes one, two, or one, two, three throw, it's just automatic. He's got such a cannon of an arm. It's so precise when he doesn't have to think and move around and try to loft that, throw, loft that ball with some type of finesse. He has finesse, but when he's quick with the release, you know, there's not many better at the college level. So the Hornets get on the board again with 5.03 to go. It's the Hornets 14, the Falcons 0. I want to go back to the offensive line. Jacob Jankowiak starts this season as a center, first five games, starting center. Now he's the right tackle and starting there. We talked to Coach Zeno, the offensive line coach for the Hornets, and he said he's one of the best offensive linemen he's ever coached. And he even mentioned NFL players and put him in the same breath. Yeah, with his balance. Sarah, fair catch signals for taking into the end zone. That's going to bring it out. It's interesting. We, we went out, and Corey, I'm not going to let you go yet because you had a session with Coach Zeno. We went out, which was really a lot of fun, where he really was teaching us what these young men need to learn to get to the next level. Yeah, hand placement, balance, you know, it's one of those things where if you can get the footwork and dance on the offensive line, that first and foremost, and technique is, is really fundamental, you're gonna be something. On the defensive line, Joey Noble now moves to the right side, Kevin Robinson on the left side of the defensive end. So the Falcons come out, Bravo at quarterback, Stevenson at running back. First down and 10 at the 25. C.J. Parker, they hand it off to Stevenson. Stevenson hits off a right gap. Gets a gain of about two on the play. Kevin Robinson, one of the defensive linemen in on the tackle. Omar Gonzalez now rounds out that front four. And you said Jaden Garner now in for Cole Hansen. Same secondary unit so second down and seven here at Chappelle Stadium the Hornets up by 14 Tucker comes out far side Bravo still a quarterback Stevenson trying to see who's coming he comes out in the flat they wanted to throw to him and then they try to go back to the middle incomplete pass well designed play Corey if you can just get a breath one more time you probably get that to Jacob Gasser who's got some yardage to run with. Credit for Rush for forcing a bad throw because Gasser was wide open in the middle. Kari Henley went to the outside to cover deep on that left side because they wanted to hit in the swing Stevenson to get him open one-on-one -on -one with the backer. Kasibway well, read it so well that he had to come over the middle. Tucker comes out to the far side. Gasser next to him in the slot on this side. Big tight end who caught his second pass of the year. Decides to join the party. Bravo goes back, has time, throws across the middle of the field. Incomplete, intercepted flag on the play for the Hornets. Second straight week with an interception by Troy LaFridge. Last week against Palomar, he went 28 yards for a touchdown. You have a penalty on the play, we'll see. Watch the replay, watch the rush. You gotta get rid of it sooner than you want to. Overshoots his receiver, LaFridge, excellent, excellent catch. Penalty is against the Falcons, so the interception will stand for the Hornets. And of course, once again, we talked about defensive backs mm -hmm. in this room before the game. Well, we talked about them before the season in the, in the preseason and the first couple games. You're like, ah, they should be good, but maybe they're not there yet. Now, Mark, you're talking about another secondary unit for Phil Austin that's magnificent. Quinn Commons comes now in the game. 18 passes so far this season. He's at the 50% mark, has a couple touchdowns when you look at him at quarterback. Deceptive speed back there. Yes. Get a flag on the play. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you're wordy. Just makes it easier on me. Is Noah sleeping down there or something? Is he? There he is, there's Noah. 
And you saw the movement up front. Everybody was going except for the center, Glenn Bernard. Dennis Houston to the near side of the field. Quinn Commons comes out. Hands it off to Lucky. Lucky tries to turn the corner, struggling to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose yardage on that play. And you want to credit the defensive line for the Falcons for stretching that play. That's not a play that's supposed to go to the outside. That's a play that's supposed to stretch right around the end and curl through. Barnaby with the stop. Credit the D-line for stretching it out. Dennis Houston stays close to us. Tim Allen goes up far side of the field. Robert Downs a third in the slot over there. Quinn Commons. Throws it over there. Throws it just on the money again to Jawan Johnson. And Jawan Johnson, he seems to catch everything that comes to him. And Corey, the strength he has as a wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, in the slot, he's one of the best. He takes after Marcus Grossman. He's picked up right where he left off. First down and 10. Quinn takes it, gets maybe a gain of two on the play, up to about the 35. Jordan Thomas, 6'3 sophomore out of Norwalk, steps up and drops him. We're at the 319 mark here on SportsNetUSA.net. Markel Raymond comes in the game. Tyrone Miller now in, goes over to the far side of the field. Raymond's going to be outside of him. McGee goes in at running back. Sean North over on the right side. Quinn Commons going across the middle of the field. On the money, Markel Raymond. Just brings that in there like picking a flower off a branch. And that's 44, excuse me, 36 yards. Here's your replay. Again, he has excellent speed. He gets past corner, at the corner. Nice throw by Commons and can't do anything to it. Quinn Commons takes it up the middle himself and gets in. So Commons on a quarterback keeper gets on the board. So the Hornets once again get on the field illegal substitution against the Falcons declined so the touchdown will stand with 241 to go here in the first quarter will the Hornets now look like they're going to put up three against the Falcons so after last week in Palomar Palomar jumped on Fullerton seven to nothing in the first few minutes of the game and Fullerton put up 21 points in that first quarter. Corey Lewis comes in, ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. So Corey Lewis, so far this season, extra points. He's made three tonight, that's 31, that's 29. So again, fake it to the outside, and just walk up the middle and you got six points. And what they're doing this, Splits for the defensive line for Cerritos is wide to begin with. And Fullerton is an offensive unit, a excellent run blocking. Well, again, what Coach Zeno wanted, get better at pass blocking, run blocking, they got down. Yeah, after this kickoff, we'll go down to Noah and see what he's seen in the first quarter, what the coaches are saying down on the field. And of course, like we said, you know, when you really miss two extra points so far this season, Corey has already been, you've already been promised a 64 yard field goal. That would break the Idaho record, right? 63? Utah. Utah. Utah? He has, he's Utah, tied for the Utah Idaho. record for 63 yards in a high school game. Come on, man. This is not ge geography. Fair catch signals. Because we know Utah is by what? Torrance? Or West No, Kavina? no, no. Torrance is next to Prague. Oh, I'm sorry. So there's okay. Prague, then there's Torrance. Now I know where I'm, now I know where we're going today after this game. There you go. Don't forget after this game, Golden West College takes on Orange Coast College on SportsNetUSA.net. You might hear two familiar voices calling that game from Labard Stadium. Corey Nealon and Mark Pavlovich are having a road trip after this one. Battle of the Bell. Gabby Nealon's going with us, like it or not. She's going with us. First down and 10 for the Falcons at the 25. Bravo looks over. Stevenson steps up a half a back. They hand it up to Stevenson. Looks for a block. Turns at the 40. 45. Runs across the 50. And again, I'm going to tell you, he glides. And when you talk about a running back glide, it doesn't mean they're not fast. They run. Corey, watch when you see him. This was on the kickoff. But if we get that next running attack, 
he puts no effort into his running as a running back. Yeah, 33 yards on the run. You can see why he's so special and why they want to, why Fullerton wants to keep him contained. First down and 10 at the 42. Tucker goes to the far side of the field. C.J. Parks comes nearest. Stevenson in the backfield with Bravo. First down and 10. No rain on the field right now. Bravo goes back. Looks across the middle of the field, overshoots everybody in complete path. Seven on seven, that's Hindley. Covering Tucker. Ryan Osborne listening. He agrees with that Robert Downs statement, the third. Robert Downs, the third statement we made a while back about the catch he made and the run against Golden West in the first game of the season. So it's going to bring up a second down and 10 at the 42. Bravo looks over. Runs Gasser out to the right-hand side. Tucker's going to go out there with him on the right-hand side. C.J. Park stays to the near side of the field. Second down and 10. Bravo looks things over. Stevenson in the backfield. Throws it over here on the right side. Going out, getting it. Going to be Carl Oldham. And again, that's the second time they've run that play, and this is the, the success that they wanted on that on that boot and throw watch. You have to pay so close attention to Stevenson. Kevin Robinson bites down. The end is open. Gardner was nowhere to be found either. Actually, excuse me, that's Alan Geron was nowhere to be found. My mistake again. That's 48. Ryan Simpson. Look at one of them, right? C.J. Park to the near side of the field. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Falcons. Bravo goes back, has time to throw. Here they come from behind. Can he outrun it? He can't, Corey, the speed of this defense. Yeah, Kevin Robinson, Robertson makes up for that last play Robinson, with this play. He dived, dove. He dived and dove and brought down Bravo the Bulldog from West Covina. Take care of yourself, man. We got two today. <laughs> I can't read it. I ain't even playing. <coughs> Quick, where's one? I need a new camera. <laughs> <laughs> Robertson out of Montgomery High School in Silver Spring, Maryland. Tucker to the far side of the field. Gasser goes with him. C.J. Park to the near side of the field. Stevenson back in at running back. They hand it off to him. Off a left tackle, and there is nothing there but a brick wall. Hi, my name is Peter. Some people can't pronounce my last name. It's Kasibwe. Makes the stop. You mean like our SID? Third down. Boy, I tell you what, it must be the weather. And that's another tackle for loss for him. That's his third. Big third down play for Cerritos coming up as we're going to let the clock wind down to the end of the first quarter as we come to the end of the first quarter. It's the Hornets 21, the Falcons 0. You're watching Hornet football on SportsnetUSA.net in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. And let us bring this up once again. You know, all year long, all our home games, this has been going on for a few years. We have had a love affair with our TV department out of Fullerton. You've got to find no better place out there. I'm telling you, you can't find one than the young men and young women here in the TV department of Florida College. And when we talk about them, well, Noah, you work with some of those young people down there. You've got to tell me what's going on in the field right now. Please. Well, Mark, the rain is starting to pick up. So it's starting to get a little damp here on the field. Obviously, it's not affecting the way Fullerton is playing, as you can see by the score. But Coach Campbell was emphasizing discipline. He's seeing a lot of the players get sloppy, a couple holding penalties, a couple silly penalties, and he really wants them to cut that out. Thanks, Noah. Appreciate Thanks, it. So much. And, and this goes back to what I was talking about. I mean, look at this. We have people down the field taking care of our sideline reporters. We have a great crew behind us running everything, the pictures are wonderful, the replays are great, these young men and these young women are what bring this to you every home game for Florida College. Tell you what, thank you TV department once again, you do an outstanding job, nobody in the nation can match what you do when you come out here every time for a home game. Cerritos comes out, third down and 15 to start the second quarter. Bravo, 
waits, looks for an opening, throws it to C.J. Park, who does a spin of Rama at the 25 and goes no further. Brings up a fourth down for the Falcons here on a damp, rainy day in Southern California. Hornets up by 21. Later on today, Orange Coast College against Golden West College on SportsNetUSA.net. Corey Nalen, Mark Pavlovich, Ed Ford, and Gabby Nalen will be down there. Battle of the Bale. Big fourth down. Cerritos is going to go for it. They're going to dissuade any field goal. Bravo comes back, throws short on C.J. Park, and Park was open, Corey. He easily had a first down for the Falcons. Again, and Bravo's down as he steps into the pass. Again, that's why he was short on the throw, because he stepped into it and got lit up by a defensive, back or defensive lineman for Fullerton. And when you don't have that time to complete your throwing motion, that's what happens. So turnover on downs. Goes back to the Hornets. Quinn Commons was in there last time. Gresh Jensen comes back in the game. Font Eckford comes in at running back. Lucas Love, tight end, is in there. The disappearing players on this Hornet team, the tight ends. The underused, is that a good word for them? Disappearing. It's disappearing. Font Eckford gets it, goes up the middle. Phantomy. Ooh, I like that like even that. better. Since somebody wore their patch today on their coach, they're sort of like the Phantom Menace, but they never do anything. Can't be talking like that, Mark. Bad words like that, Mark. It's Boy, he got used, kids out there. Use the force. Right there on the catch with hands stretched out. Sean Carter says the force. Let me show you the force. As Sean Carter leads over there, Corey, and brings it in like saying, I shall catch the ball. I shall catch the ball. Yeah, you're making up for it. Thank you. First down and 10 for the Hornets right at the 37. Chris Jensen goes back, has time, flips it out to Eckford. Eckford out of the backfield, gets hooked up at the 40, gets across the 40, the 41, gain of two on the play. 13-19 to go here in the second quarter. It's the Hornets, 21, the Falcons, zero. Here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And at home, watch the push of the offensive line on the defensive line for Cerritos. Sean Carter, near side of the field. Robert Downs the third. Moore comes over in a swing route. Gets a block. Runs off a of one. There's Moore at the 40. It's a foot race at the 30. At the 20. At the 10. Does he stay in? They're going to mark him out. I like the three or four. At the four yard line. The blocks by the ends that allowed him to get free is what caused that play to work. Yeah, if you're a Fullerton College wide receiver, you have to know how to block. And you also have to hit the weight room. Robert Downs at third, Sean Carter. There's the weight room work right there, right off of Robert Corner. And there's the speed. We predicted the Moore would have a big game. Well, there's a big play. Actually, he stepped out at the seven. So he gets a couple more yards. Gresh Jensen comes in. Gresh keeps it himself. Touchdown, Fullerton College. Touchdown, Keeper. Touchdown, Hornets. Easy. Easy. There's big TJ Stormont leading the way. That offensive line, we called it. That push, impressive. And Jair Moore, man, 6'1", 215. He's one of those Texas guys out there. Bishop Lynch High School. Corey Lewis comes in. Grish Jensen holds, ball is spotted. Kick is up. And the kick is good. With 12.21 to go here in the first half. Well, they're doing it again. It's the Hornets, 28. The Falcons zero here on Sportsnet USA.net. And the more points they score, well, the better looking they get. Oh, those dark blue jersey, those gray pants. I wish we had some blue and gold jerseys going on. I don't want to go back to the old days. And you know, if I went to EliteSportsUSA.net, I could find those jerseys in the old days. I could find that blue and gold. I could find it in soccer. I could find it in baseball. Maybe a tennis uniform for you, Corey. No, a soccer uniform would work for you. I know you love that sport. 
maybe a little ice hockey, you name it, you got it. Whatever sport you play, they can supply that uniform. Whatever you need, they can give it to you. And you don't wait. You don't say, well, six weeks, no. With the stock they have, with the vast variety in their stops, they have it there at EliteSportsUSA.net. Hey, if you want to look great, play the game great, get your uniform from EliteSportsUSA.net. High floater, caught, taken down at the 11-yard line. And I thought he called for another fair catch. I thought he did, too, as soon as the ball was kicked. Yeah. And... Not like the immortal words of Sidney Dean. I'd rather look good and lose than look ugly and win. Guess what the lead sports USA.net, you look good either way. That's right. And depending on who's wearing that uni, that's a victory no matter what. Let me tell you about the time I coached baseball. The only manager who didn't wear the uniform. Yeah, you said you didn't like doing that, didn't you? No. Nah. Sort of like the Connie Mack guy. Yeah, there's no need. Top uh, hat, suit, <laughs> tux. First down and 10 for the Falcons. Right at the 25. Bravo rolls up. Quickly throws it out to the big tight end that catches it there. Brazil Smith out of Paramount, California. Pass completed to Brazil Smith. And then good, nice rollout, misdirection. Smith coming across the lane. and upended by Dre Major. Gain of four on the play. He looks awfully big. How big is he? 6'6". Six, 6'6", six. Six, six. wow. They got some tall guys. They got nice a basketball team out there. 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, Noah Clayson at the, that, at the guard position. Tucker comes to the near side of the field. And it's straight off the middle to Peterson. One step, ball comes out. He brings it back in right at the stick. Should be a first down for the Falcons. And Mark just gave Ramondre Stevenson one of the best compliments, called him Peterson coming through the lane of did, the type of, because of the type of the way he runs. He's one of those guys that powerful, speedy, as Isaiah Curry checks into the ball game for the Hornets. Oxen Hill, Oxen Hill High School. C.J. Park comes out to the right side of the field. Tucker comes with him to the near side. At the far side of the field is going to be Tate as a wide receiver, just comes into the gate. The Falcons said, well, let's go a little timeout. Mark's trying to figure out who's on the far side of the field. So with Mark taking a timeout, the Falcons taking a timeout, it's the Hornets, 28. The Falcons, zero, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nealon, Mark Pavlovich, Noah down on the field, having a good time down there right now. There's our championship dance team for Florida College. They won numerous national championships along the way. Athletes that are never talked about. Not talked about as being athletes. They never are. No, they're they're dancers, and, and let's be realistic. Dancers are probably more prolific athletes than some of the young people that are playing football on the field right now. You know, I say that, and Daryl Crowder, the defensive back, does a spin, a pirouette, and went down on his knees at the very end. So Crowder, I think next year, if he doesn't start for the Hornets, is going to be over here with the dance squad. Nice job, Darrell. I like that. Ni nice move. Alan Geron, Jaden Gardner, and Dre Major, the new linebackers. C.J. Davis, one of the tackles in there for the Hornets on D. Reggie, Reggie Whitfield, the far corner. Sorry, Sorry Corey. Stevenson back in. Find Bravo. First down and 10. Bravo throws it quickly out to the flat. Taken right there by Tate, who's finally come in the game as a wide receiver. Seeing on the reception, brought down by number 29. Jamal's a sophomore with five receptions, six now. Reggie Whitfield gave him a lot of room on the outside. Let's see if Phil Austin tells his corners to play up a little bit tighter, try to make something happen. They already Tate. have one pick today. Tate and C.J. Park on the far side of the field. Second down and three for the Falcons. The Hornets come up. They look like they want to meet right in the middle. Bravo says, let's throw it over here. Quickly does. Stays on his feet at the 40, the 30, needs a block, cuts to the inside, gets away from two, and nobody can tackle him. And Jacob Gasser just keeps going down the field 
Corey, for a big gain by Gasser. Yeah, 50 yard, 53 yards on a pitch and catch. Jacob Gasser, their best receiver, catches it on the outside. And it's open because it was a full blitz by Fullerton and safety had to come up. Wasn't quick enough, chased by Jerron. Xavion Steele makes the tackle, finish it up by Dre Major. So it takes it all the way down to the 10. It'll be first and goal. C.J. Park goes out to the far side of the field. Gasser goes with him. Tate comes the near side of the field. Bravo keeps it himself, trying to do what Fortson's done. A quarterback keeper gets across the 10, down to the eight. Yeah, what you like about Joey Noble is he took out the running back on that fake. He said, you know what, I'm not even going to risk it. I'm just going to take you down just in case you have the ball. And Isaiah Bravo gets picked up. Peter Kasibwe field. Or excuse me, Dre Major field. Tucker, Gasser, and Tate go to the far side of the field. Stevenson comes in the slot, empty backfield. <laughs> the Hornets. <laughs> Hornets went back, got Bravo's phone number, said, I'll tell you what, let me leave. I'll come back and call you when the party starts. Bravo said, thank you. Watch, watch, here he comes. Hey, can I get your number? Oh, I'll get it later after the game. Thank you. I mean, everybody's like, why is he playing ring around the Posey? I mean, it's something that I've never seen that well, before. Wait a minute, you're telling me the tackle's name is Posey? Well, he was stealthily moving around the tackle. Duck, Second duck, and duck, goal. Duck, goose. <laughs> Stevenson, once again, goes in the slot. Bravo with an empty backfield. Checks things off, looks at it. We're going to get timeout Hornets. So with 8.51 to go in the Hornets are up by 28. It's the Hornets 28, the Falcons zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Miller Toyota of Anaheim, that's where I'm going. And then what I do, EliteSportsUSA.net. I'm going to look slick when I'm in the car, and I'm going to look beautiful when I step out of the car. My uniform's going to match my car. Can I do that? Well, sure. If I go to Miller Toyota of Anaheim, I can get anything I want located at Euclid and the 91. And we already know that if I go to EliteSportUSA.net, hey, this is what I want for a uniform. I want to look like a world champ. You know what they're going to hand me? Green and gold. With a little emblem on there, probably have number 12 that's on the jersey. That's because we're doing Golden West football tonight, green and gold, as the wrestlers battle for the bell against Orange Coast College. My two Stevenson. favorite colors, orange and blue, OCC. Oh, there you go. Stevenson, straight up the middle, met in the backfield, breaks one, breaks two, breaks three. Nobody can take him down, Corey, where he should have been taken down for a loss. He gets a half a yard in the play. Well, the 6'1", 230-pound sophomore from Centennial High School in Nevada, you just can't, I'm going to take out your legs and not wrap up. Two times that happened for the Hornets. Two times they got bowled over. Third and goal for the Falcons. Hornets trying to figure out who's going to go out there. Tate goes to the far side of the field. I formation. ATN Valele is a fullback. Handed off to Stevenson. He follows the big fullback, and the Hornets are all there like cement on top of brick. Okay, let's put this in, in the situation right now. Valele cleared the lane for Stevenson, but Kari Henley filled so quickly he had nowhere to go, stood him up, and Stevenson slow to get up. We have a injury timeout on the field. And Valele's uncle was also played here at Norwalk, Norwalk. Not Cerritos, they're from Norwalk. So we're gonna get a timeout on the field with 7.56 to go. It's your four to College Hornets 28, the Cerritos Falcons zero here on SportsNetUSA.net. Later on today, Corey Nealon, Gabby Nealon, and myself will be meeting Ed Ford at Labard Stadium to watch a game and to call the game for Golden West College and Orange Coast College here on SportsNetUSA.net. Don't forget, LA Valley also here on SportsNetUSA.net and East Los Angeles City College. All those games 
here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Of course, last week, Corey, a little volleyball last Friday night, this Friday night, yesterday. Yesterday. Wow. See what happens when I hang around with you? My mind goes, man. The age is that, as the national champions are there, but the women win last night in three yeah. straight sets. Three sets over Golden West. We was 25 to 14, 25 to something else, and 25 to another score. Any way you look at it, they won all three, and they won the match last night against Golden West College. Brings their record to eight and five. They give it to the up back. Touchdown, Fullerton College. See? Oh, Cerritos College. I'm so excited. I'm giving it to the wrong school. Take that away from me. Give it to Cerritos, and the score becomes 28 to 6 here on SportsNetUSA.net. And Valele, again, we talked about him beforehand. His uncle played at Cerritos. He played at Cerritos. He gets the ball. He gets the score. So Arts comes in. Leonard Arts will try for the point after. Ball is spotted. Kick is up. And the kick is good. It's Fullerton, 28. Cerrito 7 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Hey, I want to say hi to Casey Patowski if he's listening to us. Casey, long time no talk to. Wonderful actor, voiceover actor, radio person. Used to do the Beatles show on 90.1 FM, KBPK. Now associated with Cerritos College. Casey, it's nice. I hope you're listening. Hope you're hearing us loud and clear, and it's fun always hearing from you here at sportsnetusa.net. KBBK used to have a sports page. Now I don't know where I'm going to put those quality student interviews now. Well, you can hang them from the door of your house. <sighs> I gotta, we got to find some place. I don't know. You know, Joseph's here. You could just put him on his desk and say, find him someplace for me. Find room. Find room. That's Johnson and Foster back deep for the Hornets. So the Hornets had their lead cut into. Well, I gave them the touchdown. I took it away, handed it to Cerritos, and now it's 28-7 to here on SportsNetUSA.net. Watch Johnson's speed, Mark. Takes it at the 10. Looks for the outside. Turns the corner. Needs a block. Gets taken down at the 35-yard line. Mr. Nealon was leaning. He had the booth running with him. Watch the replay, and, and you'll see his speed on the replay because he's only out there for one thing, and that's to return kicks for a touchdown, not just to return a kick. And he got to the side. As soon as he got to the side, he needed that one break to go the distance, and that's Joshua Martinez who's going to bring him down. He has the wall. Martinez slips it there. He doesn't make that tackle. And it's going to be interesting. I want to see what this flag is because there were two Hornets <laughs> running by the white hat. Somebody must have said something because that yellow hanky came out quickly. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Hornets. Ejection. And it's an was, ejection. And that's going to go against Graham or Foster. There were 13 of them out there. So, yeah, that, that was a kick out. He wasn't hitchhiking. He's kicked out. Yeah, and you're right. I, I think it is Foster. So I wonder if it was a, and he's still chirping. Might have said something to the official. Decorum rules violated. That's what they're saying down in the booth. So moves it back to the 20. Gress Jensen back in at quarterback. Hands it off to Lucky. Lucky tries to get the outside. Gets caught in the backfield and smothered before he gets to the 20. And that's Nettles. Watch Nettles come across the lane. Avenger nowhere to go as he splits. Nettles quickly, and his dad played at Cerritos as well. So there's a lot of former a lot of kids of uh, former Cerritos athletes here. Jensen looking over, trying to find out what's going on, says Tim Allen, says, throw it to me. Robert Downs, the third, said, no, I'll take it. Chris Jensen feels pressure, steps up, goes back the other way, 
and throws it to Dennis Houston. And Dennis Houston says, look, if you just need an out, throw it in my direction. I'll haul it in for you. And Dennis Houston does that with more than enough for a first down for the Hornets. Yeah, 16 yards, 17 yards, and all kinds of time to throw. Straight to Lucky, straight dive play. Gets a gain of four. Ryan Osborne had a chance to talk to Lucky a couple weeks ago. Yes, sir. Big boss man out there. Had 123 yards before, and Ryan talked to him. Lucky stays in the game. Jensen moves him from right to left. Second down, rolls out in this direction. Looking at Crow, throws it to Robert Downs at third. Catches it at the 45, and then gets a flag because he was out of bounds when he got hit. Corey, I don't know if I'd have thrown that flag. Yeah, he was out of bounds. It is a first down, a gain of about 16 yards, but I don't know if i throw that flag. Watch, watch the replay. It wasn't anything malicious. He already had his head down. That's Markel Hunter right there. Makes the catch, and then he hits him right as he's going out of bounds. I don't think i throw that flag. I don't throw the flag either. And plus, it was a body hit, too. It would have been different if it had gone up higher. Yeah. But nonetheless, rules, rules is rules, as they say. Not that all rules are fair. That is true. Or defining. Well, we had those less defining rules Gresh, straight dive play one more time. So Gresh Jensen trying to run the football for the thing. Amir McGee in the game, running back. So it's a third down and eight for the Hornets here on SportsNetUSA.net. Six minutes to go in the first half. The Hornets 28, Falcons seven. McGee goes from left to right. Chris Jensen goes back. Pump fakes it to his left. Looks. Nobody picks him up. Takes off running. Looks the middle. Gives a little juke. Gets down to the 21. Boy, it's going to be close. It's going to be just short. The trail, excuse me, Barnaby makes the stop. So it'll be fourth and short. Good recovery by the backer. Richardson out far to the right. Sean North with him on the right-hand side. Raymond, close side of the field, or left side of the formation. McGee, deep set back. Gresh Jensen hands it off to McGee, goes straight up the middle. He's got the first to say the least, so first down for McGee. McGee on the carry. Mir McGee out of Westland, Oregon. Westland West. High School. Brought down by Jordan Thomas. Bring up Avenger back in the game in the backfield. Tim Allen. Robert Downs the third, Jawan Johnson to the far side of the field. We get a flag. Sideline warning against the Hornets. And you know, this group of wide receivers for the Hornets, for the last three years, they've been special. You know, special guys, all of them can catch, all of them can block. You remember past years, there have been one or two, like the Ryan Longoria, Eli Pleasant days when they went to the 2013 state championship. Chris Jensen looks one way, goes the other way, lays out, incomplete pass. He was to, there, but Dennis Houston ran out of real estate. Yeah, had to dive, and with that dive, lifted up his feet, couldn't drop them tippy toes back down. But we go back to the group as a whole for these last three years, as good as anything, no longer do you have the Marquise Avery who was just dynamic. He had 60 touches. That's not anymore with the Fullerton College Horton offense. No. Variety is the spice of life. Yes, it is. For this Hornet team. And that's true on the defensive side, too. Not just offense, but I think Brian Crooks has that with his defense. Gress Jensen takes it down himself, looks the outside. Touchdown, Fullerton College. No, down at the one. Oh, down at the one? Yeah. And it's funny, Mark. They fake the handoff to Lucky up the middle, and Lucky's just strolling to the goal line. Nobody touched him. Watch the handoff here. Lucky bounces. Can't get in. Stood up. Nice job by Thomas again, making the stop. That's his fourth tackle in the first half. The last time I'm going to trust Dennis Houston throws both his hands in the air. Come on, Dennis. You're standing on the goal line, for goodness sakes. Quinn Commons comes in the game. Eric Graham 
I formation, deep back. Hand it off there, grab touchdown, Fullerton College. Eric's first six of the game, or of the season. Special teams guy. Just opened it up off the three hole, or excuse me, the two hole, and walks in for six, and has an injured Falcon. Dominique Redden was the up back in that I formation, hits the line, seals the hole. Even though you get no credit for that touchdown, you should get a lot of love from everybody watching film on Sunday morning when you go down to the coach's room here on sportsnetusa.net. Again, a lot of kudos to our TV department to catch those little intricacies that we get to see on replay here on sportsnetusa.net. Cerrito sideline, Dean Grossfield, Grossfeld, excuse me, the head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback coach for the Falcons, his first season. And that's De Leon Arthur, Arthur out of Cabrillo as a freshman. And of course, you see Xavier Green, Jawan Johnson, and Robert Downs III all sitting together down in front of us talking so, about what they could do because that's a trio that can do anything together. So you go faster, 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 and faster. Sort of like us standing next to each other. There's Gabby, fast. There's me, I'm faster, and then you fastest. I thought it was slow, slower, and stop. <laughs> Ball is spotted, the kick is up, and the kick was good. So four minutes to go in the first half. Well, it's a love fest if you're a Hornet. If you're a Falcons, you're still looking to take off and fly. It's the Hornets, 35. The Cerrito Falcons, 7, here on Sportsnet, USA. Dot net. Tom deep down there, equipment manager for the Hornets. Always gives Noah and whoever's down there something to talk about. I think Tom made Ryan Osborne. Oh, he did. Yeah. yeah. That's his. That's his. That's his. You know, puppet child. <laughs> this is our national championship dance squad out there with the pink pom poms? That's right. Breast cancer awareness month in football you know and when we use the word cancer well let's let's realize it touches all of us and if you've got a loved one hey send them out to get those checks that they need no matter what age they are be it a male or a female make sure that you take on that deadly disease straight up if you catch it quick enough you know the likelihood will be excellent for your family. If you're one of those people that likes to deny that you could ever have it, well, that day they look at you could be the last day you ever hear it. So remember, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, take your loved one down to get the checkup that they need. Falcons, straight up the middle, all the way to the 34-yard line. Brandon Jones. First return of the day. So the officials are a little confused where they want to spot the ball. Duke Kakiva is now the left tackle for the Hornets with Robertson, Hill, and Darso. Asher Fro, who had a sack last week, who was on the sports on the coaches show last week with Ryan. Not in there. Simpson, Hanson, and Kasibwe. Same secondary. Jeremy Haywood now in a tight end. And we get a timeout on the field. So Haywood comes in. And Cerrito saw the play clock ticking away and going down, Corey, and they couldn't figure out why they didn't have it pushed back up to 25 right after the reset of yeah. the kickoff return. So timeout on the field with 3.55 to go. It's the Hornets, 35. The Cerritos Falcons, 7, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. LA Valley on Sportsnet, USA.net. East LA City College on Sportsnet, USA.net. And later on tonight, Corey Nalen, Gabby Nalen, and I'm going along where the ride, Orange Coast College against Golden West College on Sportsnet, USA.net. No, I was just going to say that was Brian Crooks talking to his defensive unit, saying we need the ball back with 3.55 to play in the first as a secondary. 
three is LaFridge, seven is Henley, 23 is Jay Brown, who had a pick six the last time we were here at Chappelle Stadium, and the near side, Xavion Steele. Two of those guys have interceptions in the last two weeks. Haywood in a tight end for the Falcons, six foot three, 265 pounds. He goes to throw a block, misses his block. If he throws the block, well, maybe that young man, Stevenson, is still running with the football. It's going to bring up a second down and about 10 and a half for the Falcons. It'll be interesting what his halftime stats read. Watch the, watch the pursuit by the Hornets to really stretch the play out. They try to seal, but nothing there. Simpson gets in there first. LaFridge makes him use a stiff arm. Hansen is there to corral him out of bounds. So nice job on defense by the Hornets. Gasser goes out far side of the field. Tate outside of him on that side of the field. C.J. Parker near side of the field to Corey and I. Bravo looks things over. Stevenson in the backfield. Second down and 10. Give it to Stevenson. Off left tackle. Doesn't go any place. Maybe back to the original line or a half a yard. It's going to bring up a third down and nine. That's Kakiva. Duke, six feet, 250 from Honolulu. Three minutes to go here in the first half on SportsNetUSA.net. And here's where the Falcons have to be careful. It's third down and eight yards to go. The usual is to pass to the outside and try to pick up the first down. Hornets, let's see how tight they play on the edges. Big third down. Bravo looks him over. Corey says that, and the corners back off. Here comes the pressure. Thrown out there, taken out of the air by C.J. Parker. First down for the Falcons. Excellent catch by C.J. I mean, he went up, good throw. Watch Bravo wind up. From the blind side, the rush was coming. Parks stretches out, makes the diving catch for a first down. So first and 10, cross midfield right at the 49-yard line. Parks comes to the near side of the field, Tucker. Outside of him, Tate goes the far side of the field. Gasser in the slot up there. First down and 10. Tate moves in, stacks himself now behind Gasser. Bravo. Double clutches, flips it up in the air. Taken there by Stevenson on an underhand oofus pass. Watch this. This is an oofus pass. Watch. Okay, I'm going to get rid Ooh! Oh, 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 you caught her. Oh, great catch. It's an oofus pass. Here on Sportsnet, USA.net. To all you. Second down and eight. Creativity by the Falcons in football. Big second down and eight for the Falcons. CJ goes in motion, comes tight. Try to run it out. Bravo has time. Now he's trying to run away from a defense and contract down a quarterback. Throws it easily there to Gasser. Gasser stays on his feet. This young man refuses to go down as an end. Another 30 yard play. And what was special about that is Bravo kept his head about himself. Xavion Steele was trying to bait the interception to Gasser earlier and trying to get him to throw. He sees somebody coming behind him, didn't know he has help, so he comes off of Gasser. Gasser gets the reception. He picks up 10 more, 20 more yards. Tucker and Parker out to the right. Bravo goes back again, sees Tate turn, throws it over there, picked out of the air. Reggie Whitfield looking to score, and driven out of bounds by Tate. Reggie Whitfield, again, nice interception by Mr. Whitfield for the Hornets. He watched the replay. They were in their zone defense, so Whitfield was almost caught in no man's land. Henley lets Gasser go. Whitfield, it was just on the throne. A better throw. That would have been six. And brought out of bounds by Tate right at the 43-yard line. So Quinn Commons comes in at quarterback again. Moore at running back with 31 seconds to go here in the second quarter. The Hornets up by 28. It's the Hornets 35, the Falcons seven. They hand it off to Moore. Moore straight up the middle, gets to the 50. Moore on the carry. 
Brought down by Shimpton. Come back up quickly. Quinn Commons goes back. Quinn looking, has time. Plants his feet. Pump fakes it. Flips over here. Tries to get it to Tim Allen. Incomplete pass. Pass is incomplete. 12 go. seconds to go. Hornets 35. The Falcons 7 on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. You know what I want? Or you know what I want, Mark? What's that? Just get to the ball to the 40. There's your there's your 67 yard field goal. No, huh? just to the 40. We'll take a 57 yard attempt. All right. He's still got one timeout left. Corey really wants this. Both Corey's do. Quinn Common goes back. Flings it at the 38. Step out of bounds. Boy, you might get your wish. It could be off the catch as Dennis Houston reels it in. Got to the 35-yard line, that's not too bad. Set up at the 42, it's gonna be about a 52-yard kick. Well, you called it, so I'm gonna let you call this one. You predicted it. Mr. Nalen will let you know what happens with 12 seconds to go here in the first half. So Lewis has made two field goals on the season. Jensen to hold it, that's gonna be short. It was straight, but it was short. That's going to end the first half of play with Fullerton, a 35-7 to lead over the Cerritos Falcons. We're going to get those stats so they can be read on the air, and Mark is going to talk. I don't didn't see an interview for him, so we'll see what's going to happen. And Mark, go ahead. I'll get to work for you. Well, I tell you what, you know, look for a gift, look for a gift. It's hands to you, and you say to somebody, it's the wrong color. Take it back. I just don't want it. That's exactly what Corey Nalen did to Corey Lewis here on sports at USA.net. But besides that, all the gifts that you were handed if you were a Hornet fan, you couldn't ask for anything more. The Hornets go to the locker room at halftime, up by 28. It's Fullerton, 35. The Hornets, 7 on Sportsnet, USA.net. The national champion dance squad for Fullerton College is on the field. They won numerous awards over the years as being one of the best dance squads in the nation. And I tell you what, you'll look and say, oh, well, I could do that on the weekend. No, this is hours of practice, hours of training, going out there and working as hard as any football player, baseball player, basketball player, ice hockey player, or track star is what these young women do. And they also carry the name of Fullerton College on every competition they go into. And when they do, they come home with top honors here on sportsnetusa.net. As we sit here and watch them, listen to the music as they do the routine on the field. National Championship Dance Squad from Fullerton College here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, we're at the half and the Hornets now as we get ready to get the stats. I thought Mr. Nealon was going down there to grab him. I don't see him down there, so I'm not sure where he went, but uh, we'll have the stats for you at halftime. Don't forget, later on today, Golden West College takes on Orange Coast College on SportsNetUSA.net. Yes, that game will be broadcast, and yes, it will be two of the voices that you're hearing now. Mr. Corey Nealon and myself, we're gonna get done with this game. We're gonna jump in the car. We're hitting the LaBard Stadium for a second community college game here on SportsNetUSA.net with Mr. Ed Ford. Ryan Osborne, for some reason, disappeared today. Rashawn Haylock said he was just too busy and everybody else with Golden West College said, well, it's raining out and I don't want to get wet. Well, the two old guys said, well, two football games in one day, what? This is nothing. Gabby Nalen says two football games in one day. Hey, we'll take Midnight Madness, which isn't far away. Stick with us, so. basketball season right around the corner here on SportsNetUSA.net. We've got a little more high school football coming up to you, a little more community college football coming up to you on Sportsnet USA.net as we get ready to look at our halftime stats, what the Hornets have done, what the Falcons have done. We'll see what Mr. Stevenson, that young man who is the most prolific running back in community college football right now has done this year and especially today 
against the Fullerton College Hornets here on sportsnetusa.net. Well, I don't think you should take no for an answer today. Hey, there's no there's no better way to do something than to, you know what? Get your hands dirty and jump into it with it. I was gonna let Corey Nealon stay on the air with you. I was gonna give mine, no? Okay. All right, so I said let's do this. So let's look at these stats. We're just gonna take these stats. We're gonna put them right here as we look at the Cerritos stats. Why don't you let me know what Cerritos did in that first half? Well, Mark, Cerritos in the first half, they scored seven. Their, well, their score is seven touch, uh, points. points. Uh, for first downs, they have eight. They have rushing yards, 16 and 47. Passing yards, they have 130 passing yards. Pass out attempt completions, they have 17, 10, and two. Uh, fumble returns, zero. Then we go off to... Kick returns, one out of 22. And then for punts, two out of 20.5. Okay, so now here. Because we always, you know, one, one thing you need to realize here on sportsnetusa.net is we have a 145 that Corey Nalen, my broadcast partner, teaches. It's a 145 <laughs> sports broadcasting class at Fullerton College. We love to get our students involved in this. Love to have them come out and do the game. So we do have, like Noah, who's down the sidelines. That's one of our students. So we, uh, Hector, who's standing here next to me, so this is what we got. We look at Fullerton for their half so far. Fullerton put up 35 points. They had 17 first down, 94 yards in 19 attempts while they were on the field. Passing yards, Gress Jensen had a nice day, 243 yards. He was 15 of 24 out there. So, so far the Hornets have 43 offensive plays with 337 total yards out there. No fumbles, no fumbles returns. They did have a couple picks that were out there, two interceptions, which totaled 35 yards on the field. Possession time for the Hornets. Well, they had 13 minutes and five seconds, surprisingly different, where the Falcons had 16 minutes and 55 seconds. When you look at third down efficiency, the Hornets at 42%. Fourth down efficiency, four at 100%. They went three of three, and every time they got in the red zone, they almost got a score. They were down there five times. They came away with four scores. For the Falcons, when you look at them, third down efficiency, 28%. They went twice for a fourth down. They made one, they put them at 50%. Red zone scores, well, they were down there twice. They come away with one for seven points. So now we'll end up turning it over. Hector's gonna go through and tell you what everybody did as an individual for the different teams, starting off with Cerritos College. Thank you, Mark. Well, so for Cerritos in passing, you got Isaiah Bravo. He did 130 yards. Uh, and then for rushing, we have Bravo as well with... Uh, in four attempts, minus four, 16 yards. Four attempts, minus 16 yards. And then Romandre Steve with 11 attempts and 61 yards. And Itaini Valele with one attempt and two yards. For receiving, we have Carl Odom, 100, sorry, Carl Odom with 18 yards. Ramondre Steve with uh, two yards. Jamel Tate with eight. On punting, we have Leonard Arts with uh, 41 yards. And kickoff, also with Arts, 55 yards. Kickoff returns, we got Robert Corner with 22 yards. Punt returns. None, interceptions, none. Okay, so let's look at the Fullerton side. All go. right, the old guy gets to do it now. Gresh Jensen, <laughs> 12 of 20, 180 yards in that first half with one touchdown. Quinn Commons comes in. Just a little brief appearance in here. Quinn was 3 of 4 for 63 yards, no touchdowns. Big Lucky, when we look at the rushing part of it, well, Lucky, well, we looked at him. He touched the ball four times. He had a total of three yards in the game. So we'll see what Lucky's got going on. Font Eckford, only three touches. He had 11 yards. Eric Graham, one touch, one yard. Gress Jensen touched it five times, got 65, 61 yards. Amir Greer, two touches, six yards. Jameer Moore, two touches, six yards is all they have him down for rushing. 
a little surprised on that yeah, one. Because that one long play was a pass. A pass play, yeah. But I'm just a little surprised because he usually does better than that when we look at that. Quinn Commons, two touches. He had six yards also, but one touchdown. So quarterbacks, they're the guys that just sort of take all the glory at the end of the day after running in front of the quarterbacks. Come on, man. Hand it off that guy that got you down there. Xavier Green had one catch for five yards. Sean Carter, one for 13. Juwan Johnson, three for 35. Dennis Houston, two for 34. Markel Raymond had a couple for 43 yards. Afon Eckford had one for three. Robert Downs, well, he's always catching something. He had two for 28. Jareer Moore, that one for 55. And, of course, Tim Allen. You said he's doing better? Two for 17 in this game. It looked like he was a little busier out there in the field. Yeah, he put had some nice blocks down there. But, again, he's getting those catches. He's making crucial catches at crucial times. And it's not a bad way to uh, spend your day. I thought I was going to send you over there to the Stantons to get you some lunch if you wanted to. They're still up and running. Randy Stanton, James Stanton's dad. And Can I just and order and they'll bring it to me? <laughs> no, no, you got, you got to take a walk. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You might have to take a walk. Corey Lewis missed that attempt from 52 yards away. Speaking of Corey Lewis, his mom is listening, watching from Raleigh, North Carolina. Hello. How you doing? Glad you're joining us. Has a birthday on Monday, I hear. Well, happy birthday from me and Mark. I want to wish you the best on Monday. Corey Lewis, his mom. Keep listening. Keep watching. As Fullerton is up 35 to 7. And we're still waiting for that 64 yard field goal. So I'm not going to let him forget it. That's coming against Mount Sac. Can I chime in, though? Uh, your son is just a wonderful young man. We have the pleasure. We do the coaches show every week on sportsnetusa.net. Ryan Osborne's out there. Corey comes out on Tuesday to help out because the class gets involved. He wants to see what they're doing. Corey stops and talks to us every Tuesday. And he is one of the nicest young men you would want to meet. I love all the guys here on the Florida College team. I love everybody in the athletic department. But there's just something you meet certain people and you go, I talk to this guy all day long if he wants to talk. You have a wonderful son. You have done an outstanding job as a parent. And the greatest gift you can get to have in your life is to know you've got a beautiful boy that is that person everybody would want to know. Let me tell you, happy birthday because of the gift you gave us and giving us your son, Corey Lewis, and letting us be around him. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful birthday from sportsnetusa.net. And you know what? When Corey makes it to the next level and finally makes all his money, coming back to Miller Toyota of Anaheim, tell him to get you a brand new Toyota from Miller Toyota of Anaheim, located at Euclid in the 91. Road trip. Did we, we'll deliver oh, wait, it, too. We'll drive it to her? We'll deliver. I'll tell you what. Gabby in the back. No, Gabby's got it. No, Gabby, by that time, you need to be driving. We're taking a new Toyota. I'm not letting Corey drive it. And Ryan Osborne, no way. You stay in the back. Corey's driving. I'm in front. You and Ryan in the back here on sportsatusa.net. Two interceptions for the Hornets in that first half. A play on the defensive side for Cerritos. Latrell Stearns led the way in tackles with six. Or, excuse me, second behind Tashawn Barnaby with seven tackles. So that's really true to Stone, true to form as they have the first and third leading tacklers on the season. Four tackles each for Jason Nettles and Noah Guzman, along with Anthony Shipton up on that defensive line. And Jordan Thomas had three tackles, one tackle for loss in that first half for the Falcons, and that belonged to Jason Nettles. For Fullerton, a little bit busy. Four tackles to lead the way is Xavion Steele. Again, the cornerback leading the team in tackles on the season. Leading the team in tackles in the first half. A very aggressive corner. Had one tackle for loss as well. We mentioned two interceptions by the secondary in that first half. The most recent you saw on that interception stopped the drive as uh, Cerritos were driving in the first half by Reggie Whitfield. And also Troy LaFridge, his second interception of the season, second interception in two weeks. This one didn't go for a touchdown like the one did last week of 28 yards against Palomar. Tackles for loss in that first half. Xavion Steele, as we mentioned, half each for Kasibwe and Hansen. Kevin Robertson had a tackle for loss, as well as Joey Noble, who had a sack, as was Robertson's tackle for loss as well. 
So Fullerton doing what Fullerton does the last couple of years is win. Win, win, win. They lost one game in 2016, won a national title. Lost no games last year in 2017, won a national title. That's in jeopardy now is what's going on with Fullerton. And no losses this year. 25 straight wins, I believe, is what Fullerton has now. They're going to be on probation this year. So no postseason, no bowl game, no chance to defend their second straight national title. So they're looking to go undefeated at 10-0 and make the voters think a little bit about how they want to finish in the voting polls for Fullerton College. We're sitting here at half, 35-7. to seven. Fullerton all over Cerritos. And this is a this is a rivalry that spans the years between these two schools. Legendary coaches for each school. Hal Sherbeck for the Hornets. Frank Mazzotta for the Falcons. He just retired this year, and that's why they have a new head coach in Grossfeld. And so we're just looking for the all-time series between these two teams, and Fullerton lately has had the best of the Falcons. The last time the Falcons won in this series was 2012. Mazzotta was the coach, and that was a good team. I believe in that 2012 team, Kane Wilson was the quarterback for Cerritos, and Kane Wilson last year was the quarterback of the Hornets. So you talk about 2012, well, sometimes you get to step away from things a little bit then to get back and get right as a player, coach, whatever it is, or as a person. So Fullerton is up 35-7 to seven here at half. And coming out of the halftime, we are going to have one of the coaches to talk to, Keenan Gardner, the tight ends coach for the Hornets. They're going to be stopping by with Noah Alvarez to ask a couple of questions, what he saw and what the coaching staff saw in that first half of play for the Hornets, what was good, what was bad, and what could be better in this second half and for the rest of the season. As we sit at halftime, and just to give you a brief status on these two teams, Fullerton came into this game Total offense, 491 yards. 206 of those on the ground. 284 through the air. Average 42.8 points per game. In the three seasons that Garrett Campbell has been the offensive coordinator for the Hornets, and right now he's the interim head coach, they've averaged 54 and 55 points respectively. Down a little bit this season at 42, but still winning games in dominant fashion. For the Falcons on offense, they average 462 yards per game. Most of that is done on the ground, 270 yards. Excuse me, 279 yards on the ground. A lot to do with Ramondre Stevenson, who averages 190 on the ground. But today, he's got 11 for 61. Half of those on one run. And we're almost ready to see Noah and Keenan down there. We see them both just waiting, well, waiting for the camera. They're getting ready, looking pretty for the crowd on defense. Falcons allow 359 yards per game, 116 on the ground, 243 on the air. But here's the thing. They give up 28 points every game. And that's why they're 3-2 and two coming into this one. I don't, I don't know if that'll work out. Crew's all in the back eating lunch right now. So we are, we're all taking a break. So you need to run upstairs, get on the camera. We'll, we'll let you know what you're shooting. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> Noah, whenever you're ready, we're going to take this one off camera. So go ahead, Noah. We got you. Huh? 
So here we are as both teams get ready to come back on the field. So the Hornets up 35 to seven. Crawl their way back on the field. The Falcons, you know what? Those people from Colorado don't like you people from Nebraska. Inside joke, Mr. Neal and uh, coach, we are going to interview Colorado Buffalo. Happened to find out from Corey that uh, he was a Nebraska fan. So uh, I'm sure next Tuesday night, Mr. Nalen's going to have to tippy-toe his way on practice here on SportsNetUSA.net. Once again, want to thank the Fullerton College TV department for being out here last year, the year before, this year. The great shots that you see are brought to you by young men and women that get up early in the morning. That's right. They're up here hours before we show up to make sure the camera equipment gets set up, that the sound is perfect, so that you can see and hear exactly what we've got in front of us here on SportsNetUSA.net. If you're at home and you're somebody that says, I want to be in television, I don't really want to be in front of the camera. I'm a little afraid doing those stats things you did. Then come on over to that TV department and learn how to do the technical side of television in athletics, maybe a talk show, maybe in cinematic exposés that you want to walk into, anything you'd like to try where well, you can learn how to do it at Fullerton College at their wonderful TV department. I tell you what, they're top of the line technically. They're top of the line on teaching you the right way to do everything in the industry. I know, I came out of the industry working it for 35 years, and that's why I have a great time with the young men, the young women, and everybody staff-wise at Fullerton College Television that help put these programs together here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, we're getting ready for a second half of football. The Hornets trying to stay undefeated. 25 in a row they had. They want to keep that streak going here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So make sure you stick around for the second half, see how many points they can put on the board. And then later on tonight, well, you can... Tune in again to hear Corey Nalen, Mark Pavlovich, Gabby Nalen here on SportsNetUSA.net as we'll be doing a little Golden West College football against the Orange County Pirates at Labard Stadium in Costa Mesa, California. But as for right now, we're at La Ch Chapelle Stadium, La Chapelle, well, what the heck, let's change the name. Chapelle Stadium here in Yorba Linda, California. Beautiful. You are Belinda, California, with your Fullerton College Hornets and the Falcons of Cerrito College here on Sportsnet, USA.net. It's the Hornets, 35, the Falcons, 7, on Sportsnet, USA.net. And I tell you what, you look at all these great uniforms, be it the white ones or the blue ones, well, if you want something that looks like that, make sure you go to Elite Sports, USA.net. Vast, vast supply, vast variety, anything you want at EliteSportsUSA.net. Little floater. Taken at the 15, Jawan Johnson looks to cut to the outside, he does. Looks to cut at the 30, stays on his feet, stumbles his way across the 40 yard line. Johnson on the return. So Jawan Johnson. Gets it moving. So we got a flag on the play. Waiting for the call on the field. Personal foul. Dead ball. Another penalty on the Hornets. We talked about this Hornet football team being as one of the more highly penalized teams.
Corey Nalen back with me here. When you look at these teams penalized, so far this season, the Hornets coming into this game averaged 119 yards I game in penalties. Corey Cerritos, 117 yards in penalties. Hornets, 12 penalties a game. Cerritos, 10 penalties a game. Here on SportsNetUSA.net. So they're moving them back. Fullerton looking to eat right now. Let's see if they established a run with Jair Moore or go vertical. Moved all the way back to the 12. Chris Jensen looks, throws it right there, straight up the middle, cut to the outside. Jawan Johnson all the way across the 45. Finally gets taken down at the 48 yard line on a little delay screen by the Hornets up the middle. And that was set up for Juwan Johnson to sprint 100 yards. Watch the middle. Outside, they already ran it with Moore outside. Up the middle to Johnson. Look at the speed, Mark. Talk about gliding and graceful. Gress Jensen rolls out. Juwan Johnson catches it again. Back-to-back -back catches. Gets across the 50, down to the 48. Nice tackle out there by Peterson. Johnson Moore. picks up 40 yards and another two yards there. Johnson comes off the field. Tim Allen walks off with him. Robert Downs, the third. Gresh Jensen looks at a fresh group of receivers, goes back, throws over the middle of the field, just overshoots the receiver. And you know, you thought you had him. He had Markel Raymond all by himself. Corey, you talked about that speed, just showed up. Yeah, and that time Jensen tried to put some touch on it that we asked for, and this time he should have lasered it in there because he had three steps. And how, how talented is the Fullerton College wide receiving core? It's tough to say if they're the best. Uh, Gresh Jensen goes back. This time throws it short, Corey. It wasn't even close at the 30, the 40. Comes back at the 50, steps out, and he short-armed it. And you're going to tell me what? Watch, watch Latrell Stearns get to him as he's throwing right there, and that's why it's short. Stearns okay. blindsided him, and Denson was there for the pick. Otherwise, it's six points. That's the second interception of the season. Make it the fourth interception of the season for Gresh Jensen. Nice job by Stearns to put the pressure. Get a flag on the play. <clears throat> Illegal block in the back on the return. And Mark, I was going to say about the Fullerton wide receiving core, you got six receivers shuffling in, in and out at all times. Six receivers that can start anywhere in the nation, not just the state of California, but in the nation at wide receiver, and they chose Fullerton. Yeah, I mean, they had an outstanding group last year. Uh, are they better than last year's? And, you know, I think that's hard to say. Yeah, we had the discussion on who's better, that the linebackers or the running backs, the offensive line. That was a discussion last year on the best offensive line we've seen at Fullerton and the linebackers and the best teams. And like we keep getting told, can't really compare them. Different teams, all good or all great. So Cerritos comes out. Bravo. Stevenson in the backfield behind him. First down and 10 at the 38 yard line. Bravo rolls out. Throws it right across the middle. Gets it to CJ Parks, who leaps it up, Fender, stays on his feet, and gets all the way down to the 20. Watch the highlight on this, Corey. Yeah, Parks does a nice job of recognizing you're going to go low, I'm going to go high, and make that into an outstanding play and drop brought down by Xavion Steele. After this drive, we're going to go down to Noah after the drive and see and hear what Coach Keenan Garter said to him after halftime. Bravo brings him back out. Stevenson still in the backfield. Tucker to the near side of the field. Parks goes to the far side of the field. Gasser in the slot at the top side of the field. Goes over to Gasser. Gasser needed a block. 
from Parks. Doesn't really get it, but finds a little room. Another first down. Yeah, picks up Tidden Yards and a nice little dump. And he goes in there and dives for the first. It, it's a good drive by the Falcons to start half. First down and 10 right at the 11-yard line. Parks goes out far side of the field. Tucker and Gasser near side of the field. Stevenson still in the backfield. Bravo looks over the defense. First down and 10 at the 11. Change of play at the last second. Bravo waits for the Hornets. Gets protection, cross the middle of the field. Hits the ground, incomplete pass. So trying to reach Tucker. Got a little fade, not, not really a fade, but a slant, uh, trying to get Steele underneath. And Steele did a nice job of knocking that ball away. It would have been tough if, if it had been a nice, good, clean throw. Second down and 10. Parks goes out wide to the left. Tucker and Gasser near side of the field, out wide to the right. Stevenson is on the right side. That's the strength of the formation. Bravo doesn't see it coming, spins away from one. Gets sacked behind the line of scrimmage, so that's going to go down as a sack for the Hornets. And for Kasibwe, that's his second sack, making his third sack of the, of the year, and also, Mark, good job of Bravo of avoiding the initial crunch from Joey Noble and Shane Darcel coming from the edges. Third down and 10 at the 12 yard line. We've just started the third quarter. It's the Hornets 35, Cerrito 7 here on SportsNetUSA.net. Third down play. They come up at the corner. Linebackers are coming. Here comes the pressure. Bravo says, no, thank you, mama, as he goes down at the 20-yard line. Joey Noble one more time. He got the chance to meet his mom last week down in, in Escondido. Right before the Palomar game and met his little sister as well. Nice family. There's, you see the Fullerton crowd and got to kick the field goal here. Ball will be spotted 25. You add 10, it is a 30 Five yard attempt. Heavy air because it's damp. Ball won't sail as well. They run a fake. Throw it. Almost intercepted, but broken up on the play. So they run the fake. They try to get it out to Anthony Shipton, the defensive tackle out of Villa Park High School. And Noah's gonna, we're gonna get a word from Noah as he talked to Keenan Gardner as they were coming out of halftime. After this play, we're gonna hear what he said. So Just a sec, Noah, let this play go real quick and then we got you. So the Hornets make a stop. After this play. First down and 10. A little delay in time on the field. They're changing out the football. Remember, everybody gets their own preference of what ball to play with. Not like in the old days when I played. You played with Corey's ball, like it or not. That's it. Chris Jensen says, I'm going to take this one. First down, Hornets. Noah, go ahead. Pass completed to Carter. So I got a moment to speak with Coach before we went back out to the second half, and he mentioned that He's going to basically, their, the offensive game plan for this second half is to continue to take what the Cerritos defense is giving them. That's why they're running a lot of no huddle, and you saw it a lot in the red zone, especially in the first half touchdowns that they scored. A lot of no huddle. Appreciate it. As we get another first down from Jensen, and that time on the corner, back to Carter. First down and 10 at the 42-yard line. Xavier Green. Back in the game with Dennis Houston. Houston near Southerfield. Green in the slot next to him. Bumble the ball. Pick it up. Gress Jensen says, wait a minute. This is not rugby. Ball comes out. And the officials are going to say, we had him marked down before he lost the football. Third down and 10. It's 
So Robert Sound the third comes back in. Tim Allen, Jawan Johnson, Markel Raymond goes to the far side of the field. Second down and a long 10 for the Hornets. Jensen looks over, now he gets the call from the sideline. Zach Smith signals the uh, play. Trying to get the turn out there is that's McGee. McGee tries to turn the corner and there's no place for him to go. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. Jason Nettles shot the gap on the outside and there was nowhere to go. So he tries to go back and he was picked up and tackled by Tyson Reed, whose brother DJ played at Cerritos. DJ Reed now plays for the 49ers in the NFL. And it's good to see Vincent Narvaez out at right guard. Mark, he listed the last couple of weeks with an injury. Third down and 15 for the Hornets. Slowed down offensively with 8.58 to go here in the third quarter. Gress Jensen says, well, wait a minute. I'll run it, see what I can do. Stumbles, gets up to the 50. Jason Someone look at you, carry. you're up by 28 with 8.46 to go. Do you go for it? Yeah. I like that enthusiasm on your part. <laughs> the gee goes, which side do you want me in? Jensen looks over. Tim Allen, Robert Downs the third, Jawan Johnson to the near side of the field. Mark A. Raymond, Markel Raymond, the far side of the field. Jensen flips it over has everything disrupted and the defense causes a turnover for the Falcons. Yeah, and it was a good thing it was disrupted and that wasn't completed because Jacob Jankovi was just walking around looking at the birds at the 43 yard line. I mean, and that's an offensive lineman if he didn't get that. So yeah, that would have been a penalty bringing it back. And you could hide him. 6'1", 300 pounds, not nah, 300, 280. No, that's a big hide. Sort of like trying to sneak Ryan Osborne into a room in Sacramento. Not like trying to sneak donuts past me. First down and 10, impossible. First down and 10 at the 50 for the Hornets. The Hornets defense. The Falcons come out offensively. The officials say, wait a minute, flag on the field. Mark Cerritos has the ball. It's the Hornets defense on the field. And that was a quick, quick play clock right there, Mark. So they're going to move it back five yards, delay game, start it off again. Tucker, near side of the field, Gasser in the slot. C.J. Parks, the far side of the field. Stevenson in the back, backfield. Bravo at quarterback. Fake it to Stevenson. Bravo has time. Going deep down the middle of the field. Just overshoots Tucker. Who thought he had it on his fingertips? Heck of a throw. Better effort by Tucker. Incomplete pass. And uh, tracked down by Xavion Steele. Mark Xavion Steele. In the last few years, Fullerton has had nice, quality, borderline great cornerbacks and great secondary units. He had Tim Roberts in safety. Tim Gordon now in Memphis. Roberts went to Buffalo. D'Angelo Ross, New Mexico. Xavion Steele mark is in that category. Hand it off to Stevenson. Cuts the corner at the 50, at the 40. Outruns people, sidesteps, gives a forearm, stays on his feet, staggers his way down to the 10 yard line. One heck of a run by that young man. Watch the replay on the stretch, but he reads his blocks, gets outside, runs right past Gardner, and here's Henley, the last line of defense and brings him out of down out of bounds after a 45 yard run mark him down at the 11 yard line with that run he went over 100 yards what a gifted running back these falcons have back there carl odom now back in the game as a running back they hand it off to odom carl odom goes down james rawls in the backfield joey noble common phrase so Bravo goes over. Stevenson comes back in the game. Odom stays in. Tucker goes out. 
Second down and 15 for the Falcons here in the third quarter. It's the Hornets, 35. The Falcons, 7 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Parks comes out wide to the right. Gasser in the slot next to him. Bravo walks underneath center. Hands it off to Stevenson. Tries to go off left tackle. Gets a gain of maybe two on the play. And if you're a Falcon fan, what you want to see on that type of play is you want to see a zone block and make sure you make that lane coming back against the grain because Fullerton is over pursuing every time Stevenson gets the ball. So if he cuts back, he's got a lane. Third down and 12. 6.30 to go here in the third quarter on SportsNetUSA.net. Tucker, Gasser, out wide to the right. Parks, out wide to the left. Big third down play for him. Bravo looks up, walks back. Linebacker sneak up. Here they come. He feels the pressure. He's got to roll out. Rolls from his knees. Incomplete pass. And if Kari Henley is looking for the ball instead of the hit, puts a mid out there, he's got an interception. As Isaiah Bravo is just getting pummeled a little bit. I mean, Fullerton came all after him, and that's one of those things that Bravo's got to be thinking, let's kick the field goal right now. So Cerritos going to spot the ball at the 20. You know, about at the 20, so they're going to add 10. We're going to call that a 30-yard attempt. Arts as long as 35. Ball to spot, a kick is up. In the kick is good. With six minutes to go, it's Fullerton, 35. Cerritos, 10, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, it's getting a little cooler out, Corey. I don't know. This stage of game, what we do, you, what, you start to get arthritic on me here? No, I was going to say you might not have me much longer for the third quarter. Oh, oh. I was, I was trying to figure out what you were telling me. I was just going to get off the air. No, I'm kidding. Arts is now four for four on the season. Brian Crooks takes his team over. His defensive unit wants to talk. We've known Brian Crooks for a long, long time, and he wants his defense to pitch a shutout every single game, no matter the competition, no matter the game. Again, one of the many nice people that work here on the campus of Fullerton College associated with the football program. These are just excellent men that take these young men in football to the next level to further their education. Big, high boot. Raymond takes it at the goal line. Looks to go the outside. Oh, Dennis Houston had it. So Dennis Houston, my mistake. Dennis Houston goes back. Christian King makes the stop. Takes it to the outside. So Dennis Houston on a return. And you can tell Juwan Johnson does not want to block on that replay. He just looked at Christian King and said, how you doing, man? Nice night. Nice day. At least it stopped raining. There's that defense that Corey just talked about and Brian Crooks. Young man we've known for a year. Great defensive coordinator. Wonderful person if you ever get a chance to meet him. Great dad. Love being around him and his family. He is just a fantastic man to know. A beautiful educator. Brian Crooks. First down and 10. Quinn Commons back in at quarterback. Looks where I'm going to go. Well, he says, if Gress does this, watch me. He does. Gets across the 30 gain of eight on the play. It looks like what they're giving Commons is a one look, pull it down look. Tim Allen, near side of the field. Robert Downs, the third. Jawan Johnson, all in the slot. Quinn Commons says, wait a minute, Corey, pull it down, you mean I, I get muffed in the backfield? Is that what I did? They just pull me down and muff me into the ground? Jason Nettles, number 32. I got an opening. No, no, I don't. As he brings him down and... Jordan Thomas is there to clean him up as well. Oh, they were getting him ready for a party. They were cleaning him up. Okay, now I get it. Okay. Quinn Commons says, thank you very much. Dennis Houston slowly trots off the field. Third down and five. 
for a Hornet defense that uh, doesn't want to come back on the field too quickly. And Corey, they're going to have to because the offense has all of a sudden just gone to sleep here in the second half. I think with the lead this big, Florida State is just trying, well, they're not trying to work the clock because they're not running, running, running. They're just trying to get players in there and run their basic offense to try to move the ball down the field. Barnaby back deep for the return with C.J. Parks. Corey Lewis. Oh, it's Kiki Mendoza. Okay. C.J. Parks takes it at the 40. Stays on his feet at the 50. Gets spun down. Ball comes out. Still out. Fullerton had it, but they tried to pick it up and run. It looks like Cerritos jumped on it to regain possession. And coming up with it is Olumba. Parks up in the air, forcing the fumble right there. And there is Shane Darso who tried to pick it up and run with it. Corey Lewis is underneath, but Olumba picks him up and forcing the fumble for the Hornets. That was Zechariah Assel. Or Cy. Bravo comes out, parks near side of the field. Gasser in the slot next to him. Stevenson, deep set. Couple set drop, throws it to Gasser. Turns, puts his hand down, goes up the field, cross the 30, down to the 28. 16 yards on the pass play, brought down by Troy LaFridge. A nice job on the outside as he meet Breet. Uh, Breet. Jair Moore there saying hi to the camera. Beat Dre Major onto the outside on a little square out. Jacob Gasser, just an excellent receiver for this Falcon team. Parks, Gasser go to the far side of the field. Odom, off the tight end's hip on the near side of the field. Stevenson following Odom through the tackle. Gain of five on the play. And on that run there brought down in the backfield by Cole Hansen, you can see Stevenson knows what he wants to do before his linemen know what they should be doing. So he follows him, he's just a little bit too quick, although if he waits, he tackled at the line of scrimmage instead of picking up a gain of four and a half. Second down, five and a half for the Falcons. Bravo now, shotgun formation. Stevenson, strong side to the left. They run a reverse, cut it out. Bravo in front, great crack back block. Taken there, first down by the Falcons on a nice reverse to Tucker. Yeah, it was a nice reverse because watch Shane Darso get pushed in the back. I, I don't think you'll have it. There you go, right at the end there, pushed in the back by the left tackle, Ernesto Ramirez, and that frees him up to pick up, pick up the first down. And I was, I was watching number three out there, Stevenson, and I was watching an old game from 2010 for Fullerton. They had a guy named Kelvin York who, ran, play, who wore number three. Same kind of build, six foot, 215, 230. Powerful and fast. First and 10, Bravo. Three step drop, throws it, throws it over Gasser's Bravo, head. So Jacob Gasser having an opportunity to catch that one. Gasser. And Mark, if they try that play one more time, that's gonna get picked. Kelvin York was not a bad running back for the Hornets. <laughs> <laughs> They've had some good running backs through this team. The first, go ahead, second down and 10. Across the middle of the field, thrown behind. Parks, incomplete pass. I was gonna say the first Fullerton running back who went over a thousand yards That's passed away during the summer, Monty Fuller did. So the tradition of great running backs Fullerton has had them with the Owenses. You say which Owens? I'm going to say all of them. Fuller Dick, Mike Charles. We have some talented people. Third down and 10 for the Falcons right at the 22-yard line. Throws in the middle. Nice catch once again. Jacob Gasser comes down 
with it. You look at Gasser, we talked about him, 315 yeah, yards so far, 63 wow. yards a game, 14 receptions. I don't know what he's got in this game so far, Corey, but would you say about five? Yeah, about five receptions for over 100, well, almost 100 yards. And he's one of those Los Alamitos guys like Noble and a few others who the Griff, one of the Griffins, you know, if you're a Griffin, you can probably play football. First and goal for the Falcons. We're at the two minute mark here in the third quarter. It's the Hornets 35, the Falcons 10 on sportsnetusa.net. Bravo rolls away from the pressure. Throws to Odom. Odom in for a touchdown. And that exact play has worked three out of four times for the Falcons. This one results in a touchdown. Get him going one way to the right side. Here's your replay. Isaiah Curry bites on it, doesn't hold contain, allows Odom to get past Kasibwe on a nice pass from Bravo for six. So Cerritos has been the prolific offense here in the third quarter. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. With 2.01 to go, it's Fullerton 35, 17. the Cerritos Falcons 17 here on Sportsnet USA. Net. Corey Nalen, Gabby Nalen, I'm Mark Pavlovich, and it's tightened up just a little around the T-shirt and the dress collar for the Hornets right about now. Well, some people never button their no, collar, do no, they? No, no, no. Some people don't even own dress shirts, do they? I got one. Oh, okay. 1955, short, short sleeve. Father knows best, sort of looking stripes the big stripes the big blue stripes and i have two oh, okay <laughs> both of them 1950 style shirts i, I dress like tv Rick, ricky ricardo and father knows best i got a short sleeve there you go well you know what if uh, just like me i you know i wear those short sleeve shirts too sort of you know let people know i work out <clears throat> sorry <laughs> some caught in my throat you said you worked out my bad Kick up. Take it again at the goal line. Dennis Houston says, wait a minute. This is not easy work being back here. I know. Dennis Houston's back there. I mean, he said, just throw me the ball. Don't kick me the ball. Tell me. I got on a fly pattern. I'm out by five <laughs> yards. Get it to me. Nobody's going to hit me because they can't catch me. And here comes Gress Jensen back. And look at Fullerton. Watch this drive. See if they don't score here. Tim Allen, the far side of the field with Xavier Green. Bernard at center. Jankoviak, Narvaez, Stanton, and Stormont from left to right. First down and 10. Gresh goes back. Flips it over. Ball gets tipped up. Incomplete pass. And boy, the Falcons just have a different feel in this third quarter than they did in the first half. You know, the pedal was down to the floor. There was going about 85 Fullerton in that first half, trying to get that game down in Jackson, Tennessee. Now they got to the game. They're just looking for something to eat, and they took the pedal off the metal, or the metal off the pedal, however you want to say. And now they're just relaxed. Second down and 10 for the Hornets. Throw it to Robert Downs, the third, who gets a gain of, I'm going to say six on the play. It's going to bring up a third down and makeable for the Hornets. And with that, here's a replay with Robert Corner bringing him down. Got a little lively step by the Falcons. Third down for the Hornets. Falcons look like they were coming on the corner. Back off. They talk to each other. They come again. They bring the pressure. Jensen throws it to a Fon Eckford out of the backfield. And Corey, the defense, boy, depending where they spotted it, First I down. think the Hornets got it. But that was a close call by the Falcons. Yeah, good work by Eckford working for that five yards in that first down. A little bit behind him. The first hit is made, contact there at the 20. Good job of shaking it off. And Travion Ballard makes the stop. They go back the other direction to Tim Allen, and Tim Allen says, wait, wait, I'm supposed to get 
passes, but they're yeah. supposed to be for positive yards. Fullerton's trying to work on something right now on their offense, trying to get things through for the next couple games because you haven't seen anything thrown down the field. But again, here's Juwan Johnson and Robert Downs, the third. These two guys, especially up in their, if they're on the same side, who are you going to take? So you've got Allen, Robert Downs, the third. Jawan Johnson to the near side of the field. Second down and 15 for the Hornets at the 20. Gresh Jensen, pump fakes, goes to the opposite side of the field. Nice little piss and catch to Dennis Houston. And you see the throw, one, two, throw. You see the strike in stride. And that's gonna be the end of the third quarter. As we come to the end of the third quarter, it's the Hornets 35, the Falcons 17 on SportsNetUSA.net. So Fullerton didn't score in that third quarter. And we'll see what was talked about on the sideline in the third quarter. So, well, uh, Noah. Oh, is he getting ready? What you got down there? Hi, guys. So basically, a lot of the backups have come in for Fullerton, and a lot of the coaches are upset that they're not able to execution. Obviously, they're not as good as the starters, but if they're able to execute and run plays, it's a lot of silly mistakes, and they're not able to execute the way the coaches are wanting to. So there's a little upsetness here on the sideline. Appreciate it. So that's what's going down there on the sideline, and Fullerton just trying to close it out as they've got this 35-17 lead. So you no know, upsetness up here in the booth because some of us went and got the captain, lunch at halftime. We take care of our captain. Just, you know, there's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and then Gabby Neal. We take care of the cap. That's all there is to it. Some of you old timers just forget pecking order. Cap, everybody else. Here on sports at USA.net. We knew who was gonna get that sandwich, so we were cool. You knew where I put them, did you? <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> offer you. I put them in front of her. I know who to feed. Grace Jensen needs to feed somebody right about now with a third down because the Falcon defense has come alive in this second half against the Hornets. Jensen looks back. Big third down play. One, two step. Cross the middle of the field. Gets it to Dennis Houston. Shakes a tackle and gets up to the 50. Dennis Houston. Good hands, good feet. First down for the Hornets. Yeah, I shimmed out of that Robert corner tackle and got the first down, brought down by Noah Guzman. Nice, strong safety out there as Guzman. Now he comes up to play the run. Handed off to Lucky. Lucky's got his blockers in front of him. Goes back against the tide and gets taken out by the Whitewater. Yeah, and that's Noah Guzman who makes a stop. Stop in the secondary, stop at the line of scrimmage. Very versatile. Theo Landeros wearing number nine back there is his other safety counterpart. Second down and 10 for the Hornets at the 48 yard line. Sean Carter comes in with Richardson. They go to the far side of the field. We get motion. <laughs> well, you know who the ball was going to. Markel Raymond. He so, said, I'm going to show you how fast I am, Corey. You know, he heard the starter pistol and just took off. So if I'm Cerritos, I'm shading my safeties over to the near side of the field. I'm looking now, too, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, they got them on an island out here? Uh, you better hope not. Second down and 15. They keep them on an island. And where are you going, Corey? Exactly where you said they overshoot him. Mar oh, my yeah. goodness. Markel stopped on his route. He didn't think the ball was coming to him at the 20-yard line. Gress Jensen held it just a little bit long, and Markel couldn't catch up to it and re-get his motor running again. They left him out there on the island, Corey. He beats the defense like he was hanging the rug out on a string and whacking it with a broom. Officials time out. So first, you jump. You back up five yards. The next play, the exact same play, you stop on your route and you can't recover. Markel, see, I'm going to blame Ryan Osborne about on that one because he interviewed Markel during the week. Very good interview. Catch that on the coaches show on SportsNetUSA.net. Catch that on Orange Voice News on YouTube with Ryan Osborne. 
produced by Ryan Osborne and Hector Panduro. Executive producer, Mark Pavlovich. You know what I like on that, though? Is we see him, he jumps, you say, you know who the ball's <laughs> going to. We both say they should never cover. They don't. They go with single coverage. And where do they go? And you sit there and go, how can you miss that play? Third down and 15. Chris Jensen said, I'd love to have that back. Hands it off to Infant Eckberg. Side steps three, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up a fourth down and 10. The Hornets will punt it away. Corey, the offense has stopped here in the second half for the Hornets. Yeah, credit some of that to the Cerritos defense, some of that to the score. Corey Lewis back for his second punt attempt today. He's increasing his punt average each game. Almost gets blocked. Kiki Mendoza signals for a fair catch. Does right at the 14. So we have 13-17 to go here in the fourth quarter. Gabby's eating. I had a cookie. Corey's got a headache as we head down the street here at sportsnetusa.net. I'm only saying that because I know you didn't grab anything to eat at half. I thought you were. But the headache is that the Hornet offense has always been sputtered to a stop here in the fourth quarter on sportsnetusa.net. That was the eighth kick inside the 20 for Corey Lewis. Had none blocked thus far. Bravo brings out his team. Be interesting if they could get on quickly. Throws it over there to Tucker. Tucker turns the corner, stays on his feet, looks for a block. Tucker's ready to oh, take and down from behind at the 40. 45 yards on the pitch and catch. Tucker just nice job getting by Steele. He was lazy at the corner, and he shows much faster feet than I think Fullerton thought, and Troy LaFridge chips him up at the ankles and bring him down. 42 yards exactly on that play. Javon Tucker out of St. John Bosco. Sorry, 47 yards on that play. First and 10 at the 38. Bravo brings him back out. Stevenson still in the backfield. Park goes in motion from left to right. Looks that direction. Gets blindsided. Ball comes out. That's Kevin Robertson with the sack. That's his first of the season. Watch him come around the edge looking like another number 56. Coming off that edge, and there's a flag on the play. Did they pick it up? Here's Robertson. Bravo didn't even see him. Brings him down, forces the fumble. Brings up a second down and 15 for the Falcons. He wears the number of the greatest defensive player in NFL history. Wait a minute, I wore 56 when I played football. I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> Bravo goes back, says, I'm glad Mr. Pavlovich isn't tackling me. Throws it quick out to Gasser, gets the turn. Parks makes a great block for him to pick up additional yards, and the Falcons are moving again here in the second half. Watch the replay. Fullerton drops back into his zone. He finds the gap, sits in it, brings it back out, and be given chases Kasibwe. Gasser, that's his seventh catch. Kicked out of bounds by Troy, and let's see if Fullerton goes to a man-to-man -man as they bring Jay Brown back in at the near corner. Officials are trying to figure out where the ball goes. So they mark him out at the 22 yard line, wind the clock with 11.23 to go. Stevenson leans forward, Bravo looks, sidesteps, gets swallowed up on a sinkhole at the 30 yard line. Half a sack each to Noble and Hanson. And again, Noble's been in the backfield all day. Robertson has been in the backfield the last three plays. He misses there, nice sidestep, but Noble gets there first, so he's gonna get the full sack. That's his fourth of the season, second today. Joey's not a bad player. Not at all. All-American. And Phil, make sure he becomes an All-American this year. Corey Nealon trying to direct our SID on what he needs to do. Bravo says, 
Wait a minute, Lee. Give it off Stevenson. Side steps one, takes the middle direction, gets down to the 20, the makes it a nine. third down. Tess, Tess Ray. So third down and nine. Tucker goes out wide to the right. Gasser in the slot next to him. Bravo looks over. Stevenson at running back. Fakes it to him. Here comes the pressure. Once again, he is taken down for another sack. So you watch Hanson get back there for the Hornets. So it's going to bring up a fourth down. And we're going to get timeout with 9.35 to go. It's the Hornets 35. Cerrito 17 here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Corey Nealon, Mark Pavlovich, Gabby Nealon up here with us. Don't forget, when we get out of here, we're going to be running to LaBard Stadium. Ed Ford, we're going to be there. We hope you're listening. We hope you got, we, you know, he said he was going to be there. Corey, I hope he's setting stuff up because Corey and I are going to be running as we see the national championship dance team here on sportsnetusa.net. They're looking good, and if you want to look good, well, no better place to go than EliteSportsUSA.net. A huge variety of different types of uniforms, and they have the supplies there. You want that uniform you need now for your soccer team. You pick out the style that you like, they can give it to you right on the spot. That's what you want. You don't want to play ice hockey. You don't want to be in a baseball field. You don't want to play softball looking like you're a loser. You want to look like you're a champion. There's only one place to go that can make you look like a champion on the field. That's EliteSportsUSA.net. So next time you're out wanting to look good as an athlete, make sure you take your team, your money, everybody down the road to EliteSportsUSA.net. Fourth down and a mile and a half for the Falcons. Bravo looks over, the Hornets shift, here they come. The pressure, he steps up, sidestep, has to fling it, flings it across the middle of the field, knocked down, incomplete pass, and the Hornet defense stands up one more time. So once again, Brian Crooks' defense does what they need to do, and they've done today here on SportsNetUSA.net. As uh, Gresh Jensen comes in there. Moore comes in at running back for the Hornets. Raymond in there. They hand it off to Moore. Straight up the middle. Stays on his feet. Straight drop dive play. Gain of about seven on that. You look at some of the standings this year. Canyons is still in first place in the National North League Division in the Central. It's Fullerton coming into this game. Fullerton, Mount Sac, Cerritos. Fullerton 6-0, Mount Sac 4-1, Cerritos is 3-2. This is first conference game for Cerritos. National Southern section, it's Riverside, Southwestern, and Golden West College. Jensen goes back and gets just devoured by a Falcon. So it's going to bring up a third down for the Hornets. So Roberts down the third comes in. Tim Allen, Jawan Johnson. Near side of the field. Dennis Houston goes to the far side of the field. Moore stays in the backfield. Third down and 10 for a sluggish Hornet offense here in the fourth quarter. Jensen takes it up the middle, gain of two on the play. 
So the Hornets are going to have to pat, pat, punt it away. Pat, pat. Yeah, well, one of those words. It starts with a P. Punt it away here in the fourth quarter. Like I was saying, in the National Southern standings, it's Riverside, Southwestern, Golden West College. And then when you get in the American, it's Chafee, L.A. Valley, Santa Ana, one, two, and three. In the Mountain, it is Mount Sac, Mount San Jacinto, San Bernardino, and Citrus. And then when you get into the Pacific, it's Allen Hancock, L.A. Harbor, and L.A. Pierce. So those are the top three when you're looking at some of these teams. Fullerton leading their conference in yards per game at 491. Sitting there atop and passing at 284. Comes the punt. Fair catch signal for immediately taken right there at the 25. We're at the seven minute, 35 second mark. That's right, it's the Hornets, 35. The Falcons, 17 here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Well, you know, on a cold, rainy day like today, you may have those tires that just slide you sideways down a road when you're going down a hill. You start screaming and don't know what to do. Well, I tell you what, you get your car to the side of the road, you slowly drive to Miller Toyota of Anaheim, and you say, hey, three for one special? They probably have it for you. They're at Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Miller Toyota of Anaheim, located at Euclid and the 91, is a proud sponsor of community college sports, high school sports, but most of all, education. That's Miller, Toyota of Anaheim. First down and 10 for the Falcons. Handed off to Stevenson, taken there for a loss right Stevenson at on the, carry, the up by number 52. 20, they're gonna mark that at the 19. The taken down by James Rawls out of Manhattan Beach, Mira Costa. High school. So Rawls comes out, big, big drop for him. C.J. Parker comes out near side of the field. Gasser in the slot next to him. Stevenson goes from left to right, now goes to a pistol formation. Behind Bravo. They hand it off to him, left tackle. Gets taken down there by a gang of Hornets, led by Shane Darso, who makes the initial attack. So we're gonna an immediate timeout with 6.45 to go. Remember later on tonight, Orange Coast College. Golden West College on sportsnetusa.net. Next week, Anaheim High School takes on Magnolia High School. Friday night on sportsnetusa.net. People up in the booth are looking for a heater. This is California, this is beautiful weather. It's not cold out here, people. Man live in Lake Placid like I did during the 80 Olympics. Now that was cold. The year of the miracle on ice. Somebody down on the field knows what that is. Noah looks up at me and goes, how old are you, man? You were in Lake Placid in 1980? Yeah, I'll show you my gold medal one time, Noah. I scored the winning shot so, here on sportsnetusa.net. I'm talented, that's all I can say. Skate, ride, bake, you name it, I can do it. Bravo says that's what I need to do. I need to do something, I throw it short to tape. Bravo's pass a little short intended for number four, Tate. So with 6.41 to go and an 18 point lead, it looks like the Hornets will stay undefeated here on sportsnetusa.net. Buys right around the corner. Robert Downs the third comes back in the game. He'll stand at the 40. Donald Hayes comes in late on the punt return team. Kick is away. Taken 
at the 49 yard line. We get a scrum flag, a little more going down there. Like I said, these are the two most penalized football teams here right now. Of course, when this game gets on, Corey Nealon and myself, we take off running. We head for Ed Ford, Labard Stadium, do a little Golden West College football on sportsnetusa.net. Dead ball, personal foul against the Hornets. So we'll just move them backwards a little more. Don't forget the coaches show every week on Orange News. You can find it on YouTube. You can actually go and just Google Coaches Show. Ryan Osborne, make it up there. Ryan talks with all the players, coaches on the teams here right now for Fullerton College. Later on the year, we're going to have a little Perry Webster will be coming on the air with us, talking a little Fullerton College basketball on sportsnetusa.net. Quinn Commons in at quarterback now. So Commons. Graham on the carry. Eric Graham now in at running back. So Graham at running back for the Hornets. Look over, Graham the deep setback. I formation for the Hornets. Quinn Common comes under center. Once again, handed off to Graham, looks to go the outside. Turns the corner. Graham stays on his feet, gets driven out of bounds at the 44, first down for the Hornets. So Graham, who we haven't seen much of, is now in the game. Miller now comes in as a wide receiver. Lucas Luft, the tight end this side of the field. Quinn Commons in at quarterback. Left in at tight end. Richardson to the near side of the field. I formation for the Hornets. First down and 10 at the 45. Straight up the middle one more time. Straight dive play taken there by Eric Graham. So the clock ticks away. Hornets up by 18, trying to establish something. Richardson, here to the near side of the field. Luff is tied in. Miller, far side of the field, just off the tackle's hip. Redden, the up back. Graham, deep setback in an eye formation. Commons comes under center. Second down and eight for the Hornets. Straight dive, bounces off one. Tries to get away from two, just can't seem to do that as he tries to sneak away from Tyson Reed. But the linebacker out of Bakersfield, California, wraps him up right there at the 45-yard line. Third down, let's do it all over again. Yeah, that's right. It's third down and 10 for the Hornets, just like the last two didn't happen. Well, we'll roll the dice and see if we can do it in one. Jacob Mitchell goes to the far side of the field. I formation, they stick with it. Clock is running. Under four minutes here in the fourth quarter, it's the Hornets 35, the Falcons 17. Quinn Commons once again, straight dive play up the middle, drug down for a loss on the play. So Eric Graham touches it, and the Falcons call a timeout. 3.40 to go here on SportsnetUSA.net. Want to thank our sponsors for making this game possible. EliteSportsUSA.net and Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Making all these games possible here on SportsnetUSA.net. To the wonderful TV crew from Fullerton College Television and also from our radio department here on SportsnetUSA.net. Want to thank you for all the help today. Make sure you're with us for all the home games here on sportsnetusa.net. For everybody from the 145 radio broadcast class that 
lend us a little help. Well, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you all for coming out on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon where it's a little dreary, a little gloomy. You had nothing better to do. Might as well just stand out here with a couple old guys, Corey Nealon and myself, and listen to us call football here on SportsnetUSA.net. Three forty to go. Corey's gonna have the car warmed up. I'm gonna have to run to it. Corey Lewis, big punt, lots of foot. Signal for a fair catch right there is Kiki Mendoza. And pull it down. So we're at the three minute and 33 second mark here in the fourth quarter. It's the Hornets 35. The Falcon 17 on Sportsnet USA.net. Don't forget, check out the Sportsnet USA.net poll on where everybody should be ranked. Yeah, the CCCAA has one, and the SFCA has one, and then you have the correct one on Sportsnet USA.net. Bravo goes back, throws the middle of the field. Dropped right there. Tucker has it bounce off his hands. Incomplete pass. 3.29. Four seconds go by. Clock is ticking. Okay, sounds good. Oh, I didn't push the button on that. I'm talking back to the booth over the air. Oh, I love you guys anyway. I talk about you all the time. I love my directors. I love my producers. My technicians. They don't get enough love. Turn the corner. Stand the feet. Taken down after a gain of 27. I always love people when they watch a show. They, they love the people they get to see. They don't realize that there's 35 people behind every one of us making sure we can do what we can do. From the director to the technical director to the camera people to the gaffer who tapes up all the lines on the ground, thank you all. They never get enough love by anybody in the entertainment industry. First down and 10 for the Falcons, right at the 25. Bravo looking to get on the board with 2.49 to go. Flips it to Tucker. Tucker goes down and gets it. Pass completed to Tucker. So they got it. Watch this replay. Bravo goes back, feels the pressure, throws it off his back foot. Tucker knows it's a lame duck. Goes down and picks it up. First down, Falcons. Roughing the passer against the Hornets. We're going to tack on 15 yards. Roughing the passer. So we tack on some more. It's going to move it all the way down to the 42. First and 10 for the Falcons. It's been all Falcons in the second half. Up and down the field, they just couldn't get in the end zone. A little quick drive right around the corner, handed off to David Walker. David Walker gets a nice pickup of eight on the play. So Walker out of Cheyenne, Nevada. Also assisting number 47, Gardner. Gain of seven on the play. Second down. Falcons moving it quickly. Hand it off to Walker the second time around. Walker crosses, gets enough for a first down. First down for the Falcons with two minutes to go. Here in the fourth quarter, that's right. The Hornets are going to come away with another victory here on SportsNetUSA.net. One thirty-five to go. Bravo looks over things. Hands it, turns the corner. Odom takes it there, down to the 30. So Odom's got the ball, picks it up. Almost another first down.
Clock keeps ticking, 120 to go. Bravo looks over, CJ Park out wide to left, Gasser out wide to the right. Park throws it behind Gasser, goes down, can't get it. Incomplete pass, Jacob Gasser, Los Alamitos High School. Well, it turned into a beautiful afternoon here at Chappelle Stadium. The rain went away, none of us got soaking wet, freezing cold, didn't have to starve, aren't lonely. It's a good day here on sportsatusa.net. Nothing better than watching football with friends here on sportsnetusa.net. Second down and 10. Bravo goes back. Here they come. Middle of the field. Penalty against the Hornets. A little holding and grabbing going on down that field. Holding against the defense. One flag, two flags, three flags, four. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take that penalty. Watch it straight down the field, throw it up for grabs. You get a little hold, just a tug on the jersey. You know, remember when you were a little kid and you used to just tug on mama's dress? Say, mama, cookie, cookie. Well, that's what he did. He just tugged on mama's dress just a little. In my day, you got the cookie. On this day, you get a yellow flag and a penalty against the Hornets. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Falcons here on Sportsnet, USA.net. We're at one minute and four seconds. The Hornets jump. Oh, I went down. Oh, I got clobbered. I tell you what, when you are six foot three, 260 pounds, and a man barely touches you and you fall backwards, you have balance problems. Inner ear infection. You need to go see a doctor. There's something wrong with you right there. I mean, you know, look at Corey. He stands up the entire game. He didn't fall down. Odom turns the corner, can't get there. Not saying that Corey weighs 260 pounds. I didn't say that. Or that he's six foot three. I just said he's got no balance problems. Doesn't move as fast as he used to. Wheezes every once in a while. 41 seconds to go. Bravo's looking for something. Throws it over to Tucker. Tucker has it bounce off his hands. And at that stage of the game, you need to pull it in and make the catch. This is good, make it down there. Good hour and a half before the game starts. Go talk to Nick Mitchell. <laughs> Murray goes out wide to the right. Gasser in the slot next to him on the right hand side. CJ Parks on the left side. Bravo over the middle, incomplete. Knocked away at the last second on a beautiful defensive play by Henley, who gets his hand up. Almost thought he had a pick. Watch it here. Bravo goes back, looks. There's Henley at the last second. Steps in front, thought he had a pick. Fourth down, 31 seconds. Parks goes out to the right. Tate goes out to the left. Gasser in the slot. Odom in the backfield. Bravo. Middle of the field. That's the game. Penalty. Well, okay. Excuse me. You know when you used to tug on mama's dress and ask for that cookie? And sometimes you used to get it, and then sometimes mama would turn around and say, dinner's in 15 minutes. Well, the official turned around and said, hey, their game's at 6 o'clock. Mark and Corey can call one more play. Penalty against the Hornets, roughing the passer. Garrett Campbell, head coach, goes, wait a minute. Guys, you know, 
I understand we're the most penalized team in the conference, but come on. So it's gonna move it down to the nine. Corey Nalen sitting in the car with the engine running saying, Mark, where are you? It's time to go. Well, what's going on here? What are, you, what are you doing, talking? Well, Corey, that's a given. Here on sportsnetusa.net, Bravo goes back, says, I just want a touchdown like Mr. Pavlovich calls him. Odom takes it up the middle, stumbles in. Touchdown, Falcons. So Odom, Carl Odom, out of West Jordan, Utah, gets in. Oh, they called him short. The one official called it a touchdown. That's interesting. The other official said he was down. So the officials confer. They take the touchdown away. They throw it this time. Touchdown, Falcons. So they throw it to Jeremy Haywood out of Las Vegas. I thought you had the car running. I was just going to tear my paper up and take off running. I really did. I thought you were in the car. The reason I say that, don't forget, right after this game, Gabby Neal, where are you going? The car? Okay, there goes Corey Nealon. I got his phone, so, of course, that's not saying much, is it? See, you guys think I'm old. Look at this. See this phone that Corey's got? 1958. First cell phone ever made. You know? Well, yeah, his shirt's about, you know. Did you see them pants? 1958. I mean, look at that. Can you imagine that? Trying to shoot this game on this Samsung phone? Wow. Technology. Just like the whiteboard. Technology. So Cerritos gets in. It's the Hornets 35, the Falcons 25 with 17 seconds to go here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Onside kick is coming. Game has gotten much closer than a lot of people predicted when it was 21-0 when this game started off. The onside kick, big hop. Taken there, Xavier Green had it, loses it. I think the Falcons have come up with it. Tell Corey, he may have to come back in. So, watch the onside kick. Nice. Should take a big hop right about here. It does. Xavier Green tried to get it, had a player step in front of him, a la for those of you that are Green Bay Packer fans, and the onside kick against the Seattle Seahawks, which cost the Packers an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. Sort of the same play. First and 10 at the 50. Bravo goes back. Has time, has time. Sidestep taken down. Clock continues to tick. And that's going to be the game. So this game comes to an end with the Hornets holding on tight. It's the Hornets 35. The Falcons 25 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. For everybody on the air, for everybody back in the booth making this possible, we want to thank everybody for being with us today as your Hornets stay undefeated and continue their winning streak with a 10-point victory over the Falcons, 35-25 on Sportsnet, USA.net.